This is Kitten Peaches, and you're listening to Show X Live with Ken in his student accommodation all the way in Scotland, and Wayne in his white windowless van? Uh-oh, I better get out of here. Enjoy the show! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Show X. Oh, come on, you thing. I tell it to do this thing, and then it doesn't want to transition, and bad, bad show thing. All right, I'll have to do it the hard way and force it to go over so you can see us. There we go. Anyhow, welcome to the show, everybody. It is what? Today is uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. GMT on this Sunday, the 16th of June, 2019. And correction from last week, where I desperately was trying to be on top of things and was too on top of things because last week was not Father's Day. This week is. So today, happy Father's Day. And I think, Ken, you were just saying, not just here in the States, but also elsewhere in the world. So yes, so me being a week too proactive. And as I was saying to Ken in the beginning of pre-show, that's because trying, you know, so many things going on, trying to be proactive and maybe being too proactive and thus not quite getting it. So, oh, well, hey, we're here. We made it. We're going. Um, also, hey, thank you, Rekitten, for hosting our stream. Very much appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Uh, so as we kick things off today, we're going to be talking, hopefully, a little bit of E3 and a little bit of Game Fest because we've had some geekery. So we'll start with a little bit, a quick bit of Functional deviations. Just kind of kick things off, Ken. How you been doing? Anything in particular and wonderful you want to share with us this week? Oh, oh wait, what? It's so fun. Ah, okay, my fault. You're right, guys. That was me. Said they couldn't hear you because I turned on the stream next to you, not you. <laughs> so now you're Hello. good. Hello. Yeah, now you're good. Hello, everyone. No, I, I, um, so all I said was um, uh, I've been up to very little. I've been working a lot, um, and I spent a lot of money at the, at the, the car garage this week getting my oui. vehicle registered as for its yearly checkup um, that's required and mandated here in the UK. Um, it failed the first time. It turned oh. out there was a couple of months. What are effectively minor issues because, well, basically about three months ago, I heard a loud clunk come from the front right wheel of my car. Yeah. And uh, I was like, huh, oh, that's weird. And it made this weird, like, whirring noise Ooh. for about, I don't know, 30 miles. And then I, then there was another loud clunk, and then it seemed to fix itself. So I just <laughs> figured something. I just thought, ah, it's fine. It's running fine. Hey, oh, There's no warning. Cars mend themselves it, it all the smooth. time. Yeah, it's just it must have just had a bruise that healed or you know, a scab that fell off or something. It's fine. Um, then I drove like two thousand miles, and and then it was this week, um, and I went to the garage and like, oh yeah, that's not road safe. I was like, I've driven to the like the bottom of England and back twice this past two months with it like that, and you're telling me it's not safe. I'm pretty sure it's fine. They're like, yeah, but it's it's more of a it could potentially one day be unsafe. It so could we, kill it, it, you, it, it, so let's not. Yeah. So basically, it was to do with the suspension was was bone in one of the wheels. Ooh. Um, yeah, which is I didn't see as a big deal. Basically, a spring <laughs> you replaced. That was that was all it was. Just missing like a spring. I mean, I mean, it's not okay. that you want to drive straight when you hit bumps. It's it's okay. Well, I didn't I didn't even notice, and I've been on some country roads and stuff. I'm guessing I have really good suspension on the other three quarters of the car, right? So. <laughs> Maybe they just overly compensate. I don't know, but it was fine. It was fine. Oh anyway, my gosh! I, I still, I still feel like it wasn't worth four hundred, five hundred pound to fix that and another minor thing. Um, so that was a bit annoying. Uh, but other than that, no, I, I've, I've not been up to anything particularly exciting, um, which is generally a good thing. Um, I actually, I can tell you, however, I'm now. Let me check my timer. Forty three days until my thesis deadline. True. Uh, so I'm kept, I'm counting that down every day. That's 43 days. That's madness. I can't believe it. But I've had so much progress in the past week, and things are going well. So uh, it can't be too bad. That's good, I suppose. Yeah. 
Uh, but on, on to more exciting things. Sir, what have you been up to and what, what's going on this weekend? Your house of fun and mischief. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's one way to put it. Uh, let's see. What has I been doing? So, uh, gosh, I actually want to kind of speak to what you're saying about, like, life issues and things, right? That there are things that have been happening and just busy and stuff like that, right? Um Oh gosh, why you do this camera? No, sorry, I've got stream things going on where it's trying to make it not happy with me. So I'm like, stop that. Um, anyhow, wait, no, not that. That. There we go. All right, happier now, hopefully. Uh, but no. So for me this week, it's been. <sighs> what do I get to? Uh, so Game Fest has been going on as one thing, and actually, as you're saying that, I've like I put on my notes kind of life things. Um, so getting ready for game festival last week, I've been cleaning the house, doing basically my spring cleaning, which is good. Uh -huh. Happy. Good to do that. Challenge with it has been that, um, it's been, what do I want to say? Lots to clean and lots I've found because as I was doing it around, I actually found that my animals have decided to make things harder and harder for me in the last week. And I think, I don't know how long it's been, but they have found areas of the house to, choose to use as though they're litter box and so i've been there's um if you're looking at this if you look into the sprays that you can get oh yeah that. oh yeah so the challenge was this has been happening so i have been cleaning and get it that sprays oils things to take care of it but it's the challenge has been there are areas of the house i don't use often enough and so i found areas that they must have been doing this for a longer period of time than i was aware Ah, okay. And so I am now finding all of those places and trying to clean it all up and just pain in my butt. Um, and really unfortunate, and I, like destroyed one of my couch cushions and stuff like that, or like mattresses I threw out and replaced. And still there's like lingering pits of, so I'm going to be spending this week cleaning additionally after Game Fest. So that was fun. Uh, During That sucks, dude. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's just another step of like, so cats, do you want a home? Or do you want to <laughs> like go play with the coyotes outside somewhere? Because um, because you're making this decision easy, but they uh, so that's one thing, and also prepping for stuff. Then as a it's so funny this game fest went out mostly without a hitch when it comes to actually geekery and technology, but in the middle of things like yesterday morning I would say it was I say morning last the night prior and leading into the morning kind of thing. But getting up in the morning, I noted that it just wasn't as cool in the house as I had hoped it would be. And I'd set the air down a bit um, to kind of compensate for how many people would be in the house. Yep. And I was just, ah, oh, it was bugging me. So I was trying to open the windows or just, but it was really warm out, so it wasn't helping. And so eventually was down and noticed someone mentioned that there was water pooling around my air conditioner unit. Okay. And as that happened, I was just like, oh, and so had to, you know, went and found, and sure enough, a puddle all around the bottom of the AC unit. And I could see it leaking out from above because someone had said, like, oh, your humidifier's leaking. I was like, no, that's in the back there. That's a different line. And so I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I went on the happy YouTubes uh, because my initial thought is I've had HVAC issues over a weekend before. And that's usually a regardless $1,000 fix <laughs> to have a professional come help. Ooh, ouch. Pretty, yeah, pretty much given and I'm trying to save money so I was like how about let's find all those DIY things and so found several reports and videos of people saying if it's leaking in this way it's likely not that the thing's destroyed but more likely that it's clogged that the outlet line for when you get too much condensation has too much debris in it and is backing up and so I went and it's so weird the way that it was installed because the way house builders do not necessarily picking the best way of doing something, but easily one of the uh, more quick ways of doing something. Just put a real quick loop into it with no way to service. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And so I went and I basically cut that off and checked it. And sure enough, it was just filled with gunk. Um, oh, no. And so I had to then run to the hardware store and buy new PVC and joints and stuff. And I built a new loop with a drain plug in it so that hopefully in the future I will be able to service it without having to destroy it. Um, and thankfully, with that's all the good. parts involved, it cost me essentially $30 to get that yeah, going. Yeah, that's not so bad at all. No, not so bad. Hopefully, it's a long-term fix, because I do think in backing up that it also 
likely froze water on part of the condenser because um, there was so much water backing up and it was going because it kept draining for a while. Um, so I was afraid that okay. it may actually have had some additional water in there. We don't know yet, but at least now it's no longer leaking everywhere. And so we'll That's see amazing. what happens. Now, I also haven't run the AC. I was just running the fan to dry things and stuff, so I'll have to check later today if it... How so it how works. much did that cost you in the end, your, your uh, DIY solution? Oh, like I said, about $30. Okay. Um, so that's hopefully really that holds and that's true and it's actually fine. We'll see. Um, nice thing is a lot less at least than even calling someone to come check it out. So that was a thing. Um, <laughs> and it was one of those where normally it would be something like a computer crashing, dying, and we've had to over game fest repair lots of computers. This one was not, it was specifically the house trying to die. Um, <laughs> so that, uh, also with that, uh, we did game night like I like to do on the Friday. And so this one, it was, I really wanted to focus on board games and such because I get, nice. I've heard a lot of feedback over the years when I host these events of everything from, yes, it was a fun party. Everybody drank, but we only played like two games or half the time somebody, people didn't really want to play games. So half the people were in the basement still doing game fest type stuff, land partying while some people were upstairs playing rock band. And things like that. This time, yeah. it actually was like a solid Friday night game night. And so wow. what I mean by that is we had some 30-ish or more people upstairs. And I had set up three tables specific for gaming. So my regular dining room table, uh, table in the other room for the breakfast area kind of thing or whatever. And then a separate folding table up with chairs and all set up and I'd grab board games and set them on the tables right away to say, I, I, we ready to go. And it worked. It encouraged everybody showed up and we had a really eclectic group of people. Some of our usuals that come in as well as several people from out of town that were in the area for work and other things and had the opportunity to also stop by and see the event. And so a lot of new faces came along. Um, even some people that I've done and worked with for cosplay, people I photographed, stuff like that showed up and yeah and the report i've gotten back so far is everybody said they had a really good time the people that were here for I'm not surprised sir that doesn't surprise me in the slightest what something is saying that this is not working on youtube it does this that stuff. sometimes i don't always believe it and so well because what's happening is this goes through Ustream or restream restream yeah and so it is possible that it is not showing the actual video. Uh, if that's the case, so thank you, Babs, for saying that. Let's see. Because on your stream, it's saying, like, maybe no. So disconnect. Please restart your broadcast to apply changes. Kick it back on. And what I'm going to do is maybe stop and start the stream again real quick. I may have to, like, Put them together on the tools, but we will see. So real quick, I'm going to kill and restart. Okay, we're good and it's running and it does say it's sending data. So if it continues to not on YouTube, there may be something I have to fix on our connection. Just to make sure it's not sending um, uh, any Picard or uh, any other members of the TNG crew, just data. Ha. Well, you only need data for this, right? No. So if that doesn't continue, it's actually funny and maybe it's opportune. I just saw an ad from Streamlabs, since we've been working more through things there, that have a different type of multi-aggregate software out there or system that allows you to send to multiple channels at once. So I may be checking them out. This may be an opportune time to say, let's check them out. Uh, so we'll see. No, I appreciate that. The nice thing is, if nothing else, I will send the backup from the Twitch stream over to YouTube and make that all look pretty in the end. Um, but that's good to know. Why restream you do this to us? We're going to have to go completely off of you. Uh, oh, the power of advertising. Well, it's unfortunate when services don't work out, right? So, yeah. Grr. Hey, at least we don't have to deal with Sam Broadcaster anymore. Remember that bad boy? <laughs> Whew, so it's funny because I still have it around even though I do not run it yeah for what purpose mm. for nostalgia is it so you can run it occasionally because we, nice we own the license for it 
Um, uh. So that, that's interesting. Oh, thank you, Baz, for letting us know about the technical issues with YouTube. Uh, I will likely look into a new option here soon, <laughs> like after the show. And we'll see what happens with that. Grr to YouTube. The nice thing is most people watch on Twitch, so and that's where the chat tends to be, so we'll keep it here. Our, admittedly, YouTube is mostly our archive for all the shows so that we don't have to keep all the videos ourselves. So when that goes away yeah. and there's no proof that we ever did this show, oh, well. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> Might not be the worst thing. Yeah, quick. Future employment issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, proof of things we've said. So, yeah, that was in well, Game Night, though. Episode 213 and 47 minutes in, you said that. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, that's true. Actually, last week, and I think it was, Google did have an issue where YouTube went down for a bit. So it's possible it's not even us, but who knows? We'll see. There's probably a lot of stuff that's working. It, it would be amazing if it was all of YouTube and not just us. Although it seems like whenever people or anything's going to have a problem, it's during our show. You know? Of course. <laughs> Every time. Be it's, it. it's Sunday evenings. It's always Sunday evenings. It's just, it's silly. Anyhow, so game, game night went well. Uh, Campo invested in a couple kegs of beer to bring in, the pony keg. So there's beers on tap again. And liquor to be served for all. They had some people gift me some things that were very, very lovely. Ended up having essentially seven different games played. So there was a point where all three tables were active, as well as Rock Band. And so all of that together was going in. People were highly entertained and participated somewhere throughout the house. Uh, big shout out to Tasty Meat and his wife. Um, they were able to make it to the event. And in doing so, he is notorious for making his lovely meat. And this time he sous vide, if I say it right, um, essentially 30 pounds of meat. Combination of wow. chicken wings and ribs. And whoa, whoa, it's so good. Like, oh. So big shouts out to Tasty Man's wife for coming and helping feed all of us on Friday night. Um, other things, you know, everybody who brought their games and brought their fun, that was a great time. I had VR in the basement going also. So some of the kids, that they spent their whole time on, you know, playing like Beat Saber and such. So tons of fun there. Just in general, a great night. And it went till, it's funny though, is even though it was Friday night and we've done these over time, everyone basically left at like midnight. Um, where then it was left to the people who were basically staying here to land. But the actual night party pretty much ended at midnight. But everybody had had a blast and had partied hard. So it was like a proper ending. But then, uh -oh. you know, it'd be nice to say that, and like good adults, the rest of us in the room went to bed so we could get ready to game the next day. Eh. Uh -uh. Nope, didn't happen. Instead, we uh, stayed up chatting, like having a sleepover till like three in the morning. Oh, that's sweet. Did you Just, talk about your, your dreams and your secrets? And God, your no. No, we bitched about all things geek and tech and stuff like that and reminisced over multiple nights about our geekery and things like that. So it did its piece. Uh, Game-wise, uh, throughout the weekend, and this is where I was going to transition a little bit to, like... I'm a geek. Are you a geek? Geek cred level up! Essentially, we did our normal things, uh, some subcom, a little bit of black, black Ops here and there. We had issues like we do with certain games. Anything Blizzard, when I do a LAN party, seems to just fail. Anytime you get, like, four or more Battle.net accounts coming from the IP, just the same IP seem to just not... Of course. Yeah, disconnect, not want to work, things like that. So that was frustrating we had people wanting to play some wow or anything like overwatch and stuff just fails and notably for us this morning we ran into again when we were trying to play black ops 4 because that's now under battle net and it you didn't can't work possibly play co-op that's the past nobody does that anymore you can't play well, the same no, area. the key is yeah you can't play from the same house because nobody lands that's not a thing don't you guys have phones i mean geez <laughs> So that was a frustration, although, and I got st steps closer, still have not accomplished getting my Steam cache running, uh, general caching server. I actually had a bit of a freak out uh, come Thursday night going into Friday morning. I was trying to get everything up and ready and going, so I was getting ready to do s work on the FreeNAS server to see if I could get um, an instance running, a um, not a plug-in, a jail running of a Steam cache. And in doing so, yeah, thank you. Right copy? Blizzard? What's a LAN? Um, and there was an update available for the software. So I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and do the quick update. Boom. And in doing so, I also told it to, because I was having an error come back 
the whole time I was running my NAS server saying that one of my boot pool drives wasn't acting right. So it's, I had two drives in case of backup. And so I disabled the one that wasn't working and re added it to the pool. And then it was said, Oh, it's happy. Cool. Did the up. Cool. Let's reboot. Reboot. Nothing. Please insert boot device. And okay. I had that moment of, whoa, 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 no, no, my LAN, you know, it, my free NAS, my NAS that has now all of my photos and media on it that have been transferred over to it. You must stay oh, intact no. that I do not have a online backup for right now because I haven't found a means to do it without paying 50 or $60 a month for, oh no. And so bit of a, heart rate change until I did some reading and I figured it was probably the case, but they're saying that as long as and the reason you have your NAS and multiple drives and that you keep your boot disk separate from your cache drive, separate from your NAS is that you can actually recover them fairly easy. And even if you have to do a full new install of free NAS, you can add a pool that already exists and you should be able to import it right in with no data loss. So it kept me from freaking out, but there was a moment where I was also cleaning the house and getting ready for the, party and people coming in. So I was doing all these things so that it became my lower concern, right? It was like, I, I care about these things, but I need to prioritize and not Absolutely. freak out. Right. And Absolutely. So, yeah. So I managed, I was able to, you know, keep doing things and not freak out. And then sure enough, what was nice is as soon as I put, um, I reinstalled or I, I installed free NAS to the updated version to the thumb drive again, th booted it from the thumb drive, told it to install and did the proper thing. There was like, use both those drives and Oh, there's an instance there. Just update it like delete or it was delete install and keep all the settings. I was like, aha, perfect. Did that. It booted up and it was perfect. Everything was there. All my settings, logins, everything. Oh gosh, it was, but there was a moment of concern. So big extra <laughs> thumbs up to free NAS and how well it was for, managing and putting back together and making sure it didn't just fall apart and die. So that averted, got to worry about trying to play games, stuff like that. Other than Saturday, again, working too long on my HVAC to try to make sure, Hey, a wild Tom bad guy enters the room. And so now admittedly, I will have to like hit the buttons here. Oh wait, can I do just, I might have to adjust some things. All right, let me, Go into the studio mode. So the first thing is, let me check. Let's see, which mic is that? Yeah, let me. Okay, let's see. We'll do it real quickly. This talk for me. Hey, I'm talking for Wayne. There you go. You should be able to hear yourself as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> as he dies into the microphone as soon as he's talking live. Hi, Ken. I see your face. So. And it's nice to hear your voice. Oh, thank you. As I will now, for the enjoyment of everybody else out there, Oh, wait, no, this software is being a butt. Come on, come on. Butt software. It is. But Bethesda. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there are things to say about that, aren't there? There are. There, there's definitely stuff. What you guys been talking about so far? We were just debating, trying to remember if Soul Cal 2 was on the Dreamcast or not, which it's not. On the Dreamcast? It was uh, not. <laughs> Soul Blade was, wasn't it? Soul, the first Soul Calibur was... Soul Calibur 2 was on PS2, Xbox, GameCube. Okay, because I remember Dreamcast did get one of them right away, and I wasn't yeah. sure if that's when they first changed the name from Soul Blade to Soul Calibur. It was Soul Calibur, yeah. Okay, because I remember specifically that being one of my favorite 3D fighters at the time and grabbing it kind <laughs> of thing. All right, so unfortunately, I might have to try to do this live, and we'll see. So when I do this, it's going to break some things because the nice thing is I'm, I'm able to see Tom Bad Guy now, but yeah, now yeah, I yeah. need to make Ken visible again. And so let me see if I can, how do I do that on this side? Oh, that's just audio. You grr. Ken visible. There oh, so what Tom, is it? Tom, what would you do if you had the power of invisibility like I have? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would do it for horrible bad guy things. That's not a pun on my own handle, but no, I like, it's kind of like if I ever had like the choice to be like a light Jedi or like a Sith, I know I'd be way too tempted to be a Sith because I think it'd be more fun. I'd probably do really bad things. I wouldn't That's like... That's the thing, anybody <laughs> who's tempted to be a Jedi is a Sith, right? That's yeah. the problem. What? Everybody's a fucking Sith. <laughs> what you talking about? 
I would do bad things. I wouldn't like be perverted and like spy on people, but I would definitely be like, I want this thing for no money, and I would totally abuse my power to get it. So the problem is that's a lot of how I would be. <clears throat> like, yes. Hey, there I got it so we can see all of us. Ew. Now, unfortunately, I think I have to do the other thing, which is get the chat to work in this sense now. But that's all right. Step one. Get everybody on the same screen. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good. Let's see. Next steps. So anyhow, uh, yeah, no, we were just talking Game Fest and kind of the little trials and tribulations I had of me spending more time fixing the house than gaming at some points. Yeah, like what happened? I just knew you were back there. And that part of your basement where I've been here like a thousand times I never knew existed. <laughs> and I was just like, the holy crap. The storage area yeah. and everything that's back there and all the old computers and such. <laughs> oh, that's another thing I will throw out. Shout out to my community for just proper <clears throat> timing. Although there are a lot of people on my Nextdoor app on the community like webpage where people just gripe. Um they held a trash day, like a thing where they used some of the dudes to rent two massive dumpsters. Mm -hmm. And in doing some, there was a, what was it? A real estate agent that also sponsored an e-recycle truck where they said, bring your old electronics. Oh, and if it's go. too big of a tube, you're, you're going to pay for it. But otherwise, bring all your old electronics. So I loaded up my car <laughs> and I took with me seven computer towers, a laser printer and two broken chairs. All from wow. the basement and garage, essentially, and cleared out a lot of e-waste, where normally I would break them down and recycle. Like I got some like SATA cables out mm -hmm. of them and such, but the ribbon cables, I was like, no, no, I don't need any more ribbon cables in my collection. I've got some. I'm good. I looked, there was a couple old hard drives. Like, I should probably drill holes in those, but I don't care. Yeah. They're not, they're IDE cables. They're not even SATA. At this point, <laughs> I don't care. I could pull the processors off. Oh, an AMD Anthlon 2 FX. No, it's never going to run again. <laughs> Nobody needs that chip. Uh, Stop. Now, granted, Nate did. Kuro was like, well, those might be worth a lot on the market. Or so. I was like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> it's not worth my effort. Yeah. So I tossed them all and was very pleased. Because there was a whole quarter of the basement that cleared out and part of my garage of just old arse cases. And so I was happy to have it actually recycled and such. Although I will admit, I looked in the truck. There were some speakers in there. There were some old CRTs that were like just the right side to say, wait, wait, does that work? Were you allowed to take anything? From I, I didn't even ask because I was oh, like, okay. <laughs> I don't need that, right? I, yeah. I don't need to add more as I'm trying to get rid of. And so, <laughs> as is always the temptation. Oh, but I was so happy to just be done with some of it. Oh, gosh. It was so nice to like, no, I don't need this anymore. And so that was lovely. Uh, just it was that throw out of... Mm -hmm. So, so, so pleased to my, have that. my apartment complex, we have like half a small dumpster and for the longest time there's just one out there. So literally by the end of the week, like on Friday, like oh, I'm going to go take the trash out and I go and I look at it and people have like stacked up like four bookcases, three dressers, eight mattresses and the whole thing's full and I'm just like, holy jeez. So I'm just like, I literally would just like stuff it in because I'm not a guy who's going to take garbage out and leave it next to it. Like, I don't want to, I just don't want to do that. I want to put that makes it, sense. I want to put it in the receptacle. But now, last week, there's like two out there now. I was like, oh, thank God. Like, they looked at it and they're like, wow, there's a lot of waste being used here. Let's get more trash cans. So now there's like two small dumpsters there. I was like, oh, sweet. That's I was funny. Sick and tired of seeing like a half yard sale up by the trash. <laughs> I was like, geez. I wish our neighborhood was that smart. We, we had, so our, our council has been trying to save money. Which is bad because the count, like the, the the amount they've been charging the citizens recently has been increasing. So what they've done is they've increased the taxes and then they've reduced the amount of times they pick up the bins by half. So instead of every week, it's every two weeks. Oof. So suddenly now, like the the streets are filled with these like you know, not not necessarily overflowing, but bins that are so densely packed because they have a rule where they won't pick it up if it's not over if it's overflowing at all okay so people are like stuffing it into the point where i imagine the garbage men are coming around shaking the the damn bin trying to empty it and nothing's yeah. coming out because it's compressed into into a black hole you know yeah and immediately well, rethinking their career choice because people are stupid <laughs> well so oh, we they're, actually they're, they're absolutely not because in at least in the uk in a way garbage men are paid extremely well Oh, well, that's good here. Because high risk. Well, here they get paid fairly well, too. Yeah, no, they I, do, yeah. they, we actually had a thing in our neighborhood where they put out new rules, which is actually what started some of the complaint on the uh, forum stuff, because they said no longer would they take trash cans, bins that were overflowing too big, or any oh. trash outside of the bins. 
Which immediately I was thinking as a challenge for this weekend, because coming off Game Fest, I usually end up with an extra couple trash bags. And having cleaned the house prior and bring it over, I'm like, ah, that might be more than I'm comfortable, you know, that I can Mm -hmm. get rid of, right? So, ah, but it worked out and I think it'll be fine. There's a few things that just means I will have to divvy out over the next couple weeks into my trash. Be, Be responsible and respect your garbage people. Like, oh, totally. and, and I would always mostly put in really good, but I've mm-hmm. seen people, because there were people that, sh- they showed pictures, examples, and I was like, well, yeah, those people are asses. Why would you do that? So some people just think about themselves. What? Like, all the time. <laughs> I don't know, like, there's people, like, I think, deserve immediately a little bit more respect than others. It's people who handle stuff like waste, like, definitely, because somebody's got to do it, and they're doing it, and that's awesome. And then, like, people who handle your food. Like, mm-hmm. you just respect them. Think, anyone who's going to either bring things into you or take them exactly. away from you, yeah. you should probably give a little bit of deference. Yeah. Like, hey. Yeah. And so, nah, that's so bad. Um, yeah. So, beyond that, though, so Game Fest, so what happens? The HVAC basically clogged the, the line that drains mm. any condensation. So, I had to rebuild that. Is that what like the, the sawing noises? And okay, yeah, and everything that, that was, was me sawing stuff and cutting things around is putting new PVC in, building new one that actually has a drain pipe so I can clean it in the future, and that seems to have worked. Although I've had the AC off some, so that it because after I did that there was a lot of water draining still, so mm-hmm. I didn't want to kick it back on and maybe freeze. So I gave it a night where I just ran the fan, and so we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Anyhow, so that was all that. All right, but Game Fest games were played. It was good fun. I know you guys mm-hmm. played some golf with friends. You guys yeah. played. What were some other ones? Because I did here and there different games. Um, I did some ARAMs. Always do some ARAMs because Brock Sampson, he and I are like, dude, ARAMs, let's go. Yeah. We're in the same room. We play in this. Um, uh, Kuro and I played Borderlands 2. Yeah, I saw you guys play some Borderlands. Yeah, and like, it was actually really oh, weird. Did you guys, did you guys see the deal on Steam for Borderlands just now? No, well, here's the thing. Like, <laughs> uh, Have you had it for a bit? I, I have like, I, I think I got it free of like a Humble Bundle forever ago. So, like, and we were just looking for, like, where are the same games we have that are installed right now? And it was so, like, admittedly, because Kuro brought a new laptop yeah. that had not been installed with a bunch of games. And because I didn't have the cash server up and stuff, being respectful, not spending the whole weekend downloading. Yeah. You know, which is nice. Uh, <laughs> also, shout out to Kuro because he invested a, or brought a used, but new to me, Microtik gig, sur- uh, gig switch in that I'm looking forward to play with. I plugged it in today. It's actually down there plugged in. Because it has the shiny front display on it, like mm-hmm. an actual LCD, and it could light up such that when I turned it around, and looked through the vents, I could see inside the back of it. I was like, "This case is actually kind of empty." What? Mm-hmm. So I need to read specs on it, but it also has a touch screen, like that little screen. Ooh. It's like a postage stamp screen. It's a touch screen, fancy touch touch, and you could like pull through and see some of the mini. I was like, "Whoa!" Now I'm really intrigued. Mm-hmm. What can I do with this? <laughs> In fact, I started thinking like. <clears throat> Well, maybe what I'll do is put this in the server rack instead of the gig switch uh, D link that's in there because Microtech's you know <laughs> server grade, and I'll take that D link and I'll do like DreamHack does instead on the center table where I have those two switches down. Mm-hmm. I'll put a single switch that's on hanging on the pole, and actually have that feed all the wires out because it'll be like a twenty four port switch. Oh, and since it's on a pole, you can stuff dollars into its pocket, right? There you and go. Help pay for games. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, Very actually, performance. shout out to the couple people that actually donated to the cause, too. Because, well, But anyhow, no, it was so that was another like, hey, because I also got another chair. Mm-hmm. Fallon brought a chair, which is great because I just destroyed the other two. He told me one was, another one's coming. So I was like, which of these chairs is the worst? And I sat in like any that had a natural lean to them. Yeah. Done. Out. You're done. Don't want you. So that was a lot of fun. But yeah, so Borderlands 2, that was fun to see. And it looked like you hadn't put any time into it before, right? No, like, I think I played it once before for, like, an hour. And, you know, I'm I'm not into, like, the pew-pew shoot-shoot stuff. But I was like, we both have it. So then we're, like, going around, we're doing it and just shooting stuff. And then there was, like, story things. And then we're like, we just want to shoot stuff. So we just wandered around shooting stuff. And then when it got too hard, we're like, all right, never go in there again. (laughs) And just, that's basically, like, we did that. And then, but I was having, like, a weird thing. Like, our first play, when we were doing it, everything worked fine. Then we were, like, we went back to play it the second time. Like, my mic was buzzing in Crew's ear. And he's like, it sounds like an annoying mosquito. And, like, my controller stopped working on the PC and, like, there was no sound. Oh, no. And I was just like, what's going on? So then I, like, restarted it. Then we played again. It was all fixed. But I was like, I don't know what happened. But, like, yeah, it was fun. And uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I've been... 
I just recently got Octopath Traveler. Yeah, and which like it looked gorgeous. Yeah, look at the shoulder. And this is when I give credit because I forget how long it's been available for PC. Did it just come out with the E3 announcements? Came out. Came out on June seventh before E three, but it's been on but, Switch forever. Well, that that was the key, right? Because mm-hmm. as we'll talk here next about E three and some of the announcements, because I had the joy of watching some of the streams with Copy Live and some other stuff where we were basically on Discord as it was going, reacting mm-hmm. to the streams that we're watching. Um, and when they showed that as part of the sequence, because that was Squeenix, I believe. Is that For a, yeah, I'll that they did the actual Enix, discussion yeah. on it. Um, Square Enix's announcement, because that came into the comments where I was like. Wait, so you're announcing a Switch game for the PC. Like, ooh. And this is where I have to give my little bit of crow <laughs> because it did look really pretty. It did. And I watched you play it as it's like, that's retro, but in a modern way. It's very pixelated graphics, but then a lot of smooth stuff and colors, like a lot of effects added to it. But like, like I got it. And when and like I just started like playing it. It was I started playing it literally this week before we came up here this weekend. And like while I'm playing any other games, while I'm not playing games thinking what to play, all I'm thinking about is that game. <laughs> because like and I'm only like six hours in and like I don't know, like I'm like I wish I bought this game after Game Fest because I'll be like, I just want to play that game. And if anybody has Switch or PC, even though I'm not that far in it, six hours, just get it. It's so good. That is the weirdest thing. The driver for Ken's video just like resized itself. Yeah, I was watching myself in the video chat like, is Wayne fiddling? What's good <laughs> out here? I was not. I just looked forward and saw your postage stamp and I was about to fiddle and then it grew. It grew again. And it was back at the size it was supposed to be. Silly NDI driver that allows me to pull the Skype thing out without having my face in it. Weird. Anyhow. We have fun here. <laughs> well, just random technolo- technology things like what's going on. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, Game Fest, good times, fun, yeah. a lot of people here, everyone seemed to have a good time, especially the Friday night I had blast, and then you guys came a little later Friday, but... Did you notice on Friday, this was probably the first Friday I was upstairs the most ever... The only person who was <laughs> downstairs Friday was, was uh, Campo. Yeah. I went down there a couple times, and he was the only person down there, yeah. and he was just gaming, and drinking, and gaming, and drinking. Yeah. Oh, he was faded. But it was one where it was just like, Wow. Um, it was a good Friday night. Did yeah. you actually play any of the board games and stuff up there? Because So for the first time ever, I did. Everybody and... seemed to actually sit down. I even sat down and played a game. Yeah. And that never happens, right? I was, wow. So that's good to hear. Yeah. Well, and it's like, I hadn't seen Fork in like forever. And then like, so I was basically talking to her and her crowd around her. And it was just so long since I saw her. And I was just like, all right, I'll just do this. So that way I can hang out with everybody. And it was fun. And that IPA that was brought was really good. And I haven't been, I wasn't drunk, but I haven't been that buzz in a really long time. <laughs> oh, really? Like, a really long time. It was good times. <clears throat> so, yeah, no, it was, um, that was just a good time. All right, so, Ken, we're going to let Ken Ooh. run away because he says he's got some work to do. Oh, He is busy. And so, with that in mind, and that's totally fine. I am going to adjust the stream because otherwise right now what you're going to have is his blank face staring into the wind. Uh, (laughs) Which you should just blow that up full screen and that's the show. Uh, You know, what's funny (laughs) is when you add a new video feed in, that's kind of what it does initially. Is it's like, oh, hey. It'll just be a still frame of Ken's head and then us talking. It's like we're the voices in his head. And that's just what, (laughs) like, when he's sitting there with a blank stare looking at his computer without blinking, that's just, he's thinking about what we're talking about. There it is. And, like, that's what's going on. Oh, yeah, totally fine. (laughs) That's so funny. All right, so what I will do is go ahead and get us a nice setup for just the two of us. Ah, oh. don't do that. And I'll definitely get other people to tag in later, so that way you can have a variety. Well, so the whole point now is we perfect transition to start talking about some E3 announcements. Hmm. So with this, Tom, did you have an opportunity to actually witness several of them? So I watched uh, Microsoft's. I refused to watch EA's. I did not watch Ubisoft's. I watched Square Enix's, of course. I watched Bethesda's. And then the Nintendo E3 Direct. So, like, those are the four that I watched. Okay. And part of the reason I asked as a whole is the... um, Let's see. Let me double check. Actually, let me not do that first. (laughs) There we go. Double check. Is I watched them mostly in order. And so I started Sunday night watching. 
And I have notes to attach. <laughs> well, so when I was sitting down watching, I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to talk about this. Yeah. Uh, so the first announcement was, or the first show I saw was Microsoft's, which was Sunday. It was just after the show last week. And so mm -hmm. I want to say it started like right as that was ending. And so Copy and I, we sat down and watched that one. And it had some legit good announcements that came through. Um, specific to me, well, so I'll come through here in the order as I'm at the same time multitasking to put in the uh, chat box again so that we, so you guys can, ow, see, every time I do this, it wants to, <laughs> well, so the challenge is it has, lock that down so I don't grab that again. And you get you an assistant that just does this for you, like in the background. Well, so normally. So you can just focus on talking. Normally <laughs> I have this done ahead of time because I will spend time between the shows to try to make this thing almost seem professional. Yeah, but we're having a nice weekend. <laughs> you don't need to stress well, out. Well, <laughs> it's the, I, I had but hadn't planned for all of it mm -hmm. like the, oh yeah we'll totally do this and it's like uh, oh i should probably do this piece too yeah so anyhow now we'll go to just tom and i as we're intimately here curve perfect all right extremely intimate <laughs> <laughs> so as we start off uh so the i i didn't note everything that came through but i noted quite a few and there were some things i thought just came across very well um specifically uh the order i have Oh, <laughs> jokingly. So Microsoft had a few announcements. I'm not, I probably won't bring them all up. And feel free in the chat to jump in and ask us as well. And you can, if you choose, dial in as well. We oh. offer that because Skype's here uh, versus the world shows. And so you can come to, was it, VD, VTW shows? And I believe it's the Skype channel. And you can jump in. Copy. Three ninety nine a minute. Just like when you paid for those Nintendo Power Secrets. Just kidding. Oh, God. <laughs> we talked about that one time when you used to be able to dial in to actual cheat codes or... or suggestions and helplines yeah there you go uh <laughs> thing so yeah that was a thing all right and copy you can jump in we will start with the discussion if you want to jump in and get your opinions on it because i absolutely solicit what everyone else thought of e3 the nuts yay copy this is my heart love for you copy. so the first thing i threw out there was uh that we were watching was i said smash bros game microsoft uh it was bleeding edge oh yeah <laughs> bleeding edge uh to me, I saw that and I was like, oh, so they're, first of all, they're bandwagoning on the Overwatch hype because it was literally graphically looked almost exactly the same. And that's what I thought. I was like, oh, this is Melee Overwatch. That's, that was like the first thing I thought of when I was watching it. And yeah, Bleeding Edge with it. Like, I'm not trying to say it's a bad thing. Like, I don't play Overwatch, but like, that's just what I thought of. When you Melee saw it, Overwatch. you just think, yeah. yep, that, that's it, right? And then some chick had a gun, but then I saw like the chick turning, hopping in the giant robot and stuff. Just the character design, like it was like it's melee Overwatch. That's funny. Oh, is this freaking out because I'm streaming? Where it's saying, "Sorry, you can't watch this video." Well, it's just not showing. Well, YouTube's angry because you're streaming on Twitch. That's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I, tried to, I tried to stream on YouTube and they said no. Dude, I don't, know, I don't want to get into YouTube. Just. But a happy E3 talk. <laughs> it's a Google and all the things you're currently doing, right? So it is funny is that's probably something it's getting pissed off about because of what I currently have and because I redid the setup again. Regardless, I've been able to play it before. That's annoying. Mm -hmm. The um, Actually, I wonder if I can do it here. <laughs> <laughs> well, just go to Chrome, right? And see if that Extremely makes Extremely professional is what's going on here. And, you know, YouTube just helps us so much. And everything I'm saying is not true whatsoever. Again, I use them primarily. Oh, you piece of... Anyhow. <laughs> you piece of junk. But the... So, Bleeding Edge, for me, wasn't anything major. Yeah. It was. It was just like... To me, it came off as a Smash style because it was very much Mash beat -em up looking mm -hmm. to me. Which I say because, yes, I joke on Smash and what I think the gameplay is. I know it's more specific than that now, but still, to me, looks like a button masher. Dude... All right. First of all, for anybody that thinks Smash is a fighting game, you're wrong. <laughs> it's a party game. And I one forgot who I was speaking to. <laughs> yeah. Someone who actually legitimately has studied and played fighting games to the level of precision to understand my angst when I think of Smash as a fighting game. Smash is awesome when it's eight people with items playing and it's utter chaos. This 1v1 Smash thing with no items thing, I'm sorry. It's the most boring <laughs> the, thing I've ever yeah, watched. Want to be yeah. any kind of real legitimate fighting game? And I'm not trying to say it doesn't take skill to do it. It's just boring to watch. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put like, it. If, if you could do it, that's that's amazing. Good for you. I'm not going to watch you do it. But, like, <laughs> it, you know. Oh, thank you. No, I agree completely. It's a that, good party game. I call Smash a party game. That's a good way to put it. That is. So, 
Uh, Bleeding Edge, again, for that one, there wasn't much that I was aware of for it. Saw it and was like, okay, cool, fine, whatever. Yeah, it didn't do much for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, beyond that, the next one then for me was... What was it? The Ori 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which was interesting, right? Because when Ori 2 hit, to me, that was kind of a surprise. And actually, I will say, Microsoft gave me several surprises throughout their just show as a whole. Um, there's, it was one where when it first came up, the visualization, the first thing I think Copy and I both said was, ooh, that looks like Ori, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Right? And sure enough, you see it, and it was just pretty. Well, and remember they had that first trailer like two or three years ago when they first announced the Ori sequel for it. Like, for, it was a really long time. Like, it had to have been two E3s ago. And then, like, I haven't heard much for it. Then I saw this, and it's like, you still have to wait, but it still exists. But I remember playing the first story and loving it, and I'm totally hyped for the second one. Well, it's one that I've still not played. Oh. I have? I'm pretty sure I have it in my, again, Steam list of many, many things. Because I was still trying to finish, what, The Binding of Isaac? Mm -hmm. Or whichever one that the, which is, no, whichever, no, not that one. That's wrong. The side scroll one where you play the Shadow Dead Kid. Hollow Knight? No, not Hollow Knight. I don't know. Oh, man. It's another great one I have that's tons of fun, but it has the same kind of styles. But this one looks gorgeous. The more 3D effects that I'm seeing in it, because the original Mm -hmm. Ori is just beautiful. Yeah. But this one's using some depth to it and things like that. So just watching, as soon as everybody saw it, I think there was an equivalent squee kind of from everyone just like, what? This is, yeah. So that was one of the announcements that, well, I won't say is anything surprising. It's more joyful. Yeah, it wasn't surprising because, like, we saw the trailer, like, two years ago for it. We knew that they were doing it. But it was just, like, the first story is such a good, like, it's such a good game. And I think if you have Ori and you haven't played it, it you you probably have the definitive edition with it. Because I believe if you bought Ori before, oh, they just everything added just, like, the definitive updates. with it. Yeah, they just go, yeah. yep, you get this as well now. And it's a fun game. I played it. Uh, I think I streamed it a long time ago. And the only thing that irritated me about the games, and I already knew looking at the trailer, were the escape scenes, like at the end of like each major boss battle. I, I they were rage inducing, like super, <laughs> like not because you're wearing the shirt. Super Mario Brothers rage inducing, where it's that specific pixel rage level. for that game. Yeah. Well, so it's funny because I actually watched Hyde streaming it a little bit, the original, mm-hmm. and because again I saw the stream, I was like, ah, oh, I bet you that's Ori, <laughs> right? And it was one. That, oh, that's funny. Beck says it looks like a white stitch. The main character in Ori 2. What's a Stitch? A stitch from Lilo and Stitch. What's that? Four-armed alien that's in the Disney movie. Oh, oh, it's a Disney movie. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Gotcha. Well, it's, a, it's a really good one. They, uh, But I agree, Beck, it does. So I watched her play, and there was a sequence of an escape, climbing escape thing, right, that she just was dying with constantly. And I finally kind of mentioned it as, like, just take a breath. Let it's it annoying. And you'll get it. And sure enough, like one or two more attempts, and she just hit that one piece that was missing it and was able to just up the rest and finish it. And that audible level of like hype of like, I finally did the thing. Was it like a vertical tree and water was yes. rising? Dude, okay. So yeah, that's the one that, because I didn't know stuff like that was like in the game because everything up to that point is more like, like, yeah, it's like, you know, like, okay, you're getting a feel for everything and then that's a big difficulty spike like out of nowhere. But then you're aware of it in future stuff where like, okay, now I know if there's going to be a boss fight, there's going to be an escape sequence. But no, that one specifically pissed me off so much. <laughs> like I was like, oh my God, why is this like so annoying? Because you have to like go up and do like eight things at once to make your way up, and it's ugh, panic inducing. And that's the challenge, right? Because those are timing, skill based platforming that is so precise, and mm. that is a challenge. But again, hype. That one looked great. It did. Another one I noted, and I didn't catch all of them. If I miss one you want to talk about, just mention it. Mm-hmm. Uh, was jokingly, it's the description first Minecraft as an adventure game. Oh, as yeah. An action RPG. Literally, this one was Minecraft Dungeons. Yeah. And it was entertaining because I like the aesthetic mm-hmm. as a whole. It's Minecraft. It's got the boxes. It's this and that. But it's not Minecraft. Yeah. Because it's using, I think, a f- cleaned up version, slightly cartoony, cell shaded version of the Minecraft engine. Mm-hmm. But I never see an element of building. I see some destruction. Yeah. 
and it's an AA RPG in that you're action fighting things, very Diablo isometric yeah. dungeon crawler. Dungeon crawler, yeah. But it's not Minecraft. It has creatures from, worlds from. Uh, now, I will give it credit. It's showing in a true campaign. Mm hmm. And it is it has a good look to all of that that I give it a lot of positives for. But there's a piece of me that's just kind of like, mm, but it's not. I saw it and I, I looked at it. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, like in my, my first thought, I was like, oh, that's cool. My second thought was like, I wouldn't play it. But like, I know like my girlfriend's nephew, he would be all over that. Like the younger audience who kind of like play Minecraft a lot because he's like nine years old. Yes. And so he plays Minecraft a lot just to build and stuff. And then so anything when you're a kid and you're that young, anything that has something to do with what you like, even yes. though it's not exactly it, like you're attached to. You're sold on it. Yeah. It's like, yep, that's and the I'm thing like, I want. He would love that game. And so I get that. Mm -hmm. And I, I do. I see that. I'm like, okay, I, I understood what they did. So it'll be interesting to see what where that goes. Not, I mean, I'll be aware of it. Not when that got me hyped, but I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I see what they're doing. You know what's funny is like out of all these conferences, I remember Microsoft the least, but as soon as you mentioned the title, the the trailer and gameplays from just start going through my head. Like we talked a little bit about E3 before uh -huh. and I could not remember anything from Microsoft, well, <laughs> but I know I watched it, well, but this, you say the titles, I'm like, I know what that is. I well, know what that is. This is also why I take notes Yeah. while watching certain ones because of those exact same reasons. And it's funny because some I have more notes and some I don't. Uh... Another one that I or just a subject matter that I felt I got out of the Microsoft one, which I'll be very curious to see what it means. They said the term multiple times of cross play. Yeah. And so for me, that means being able to play the same game regardless with friends, regardless of what you're playing it on. Mm hmm. So the big game right now that I play that's cross play that I've been playing is Rocket League. Yeah, right? Rocket League's like the premier game out there that said, "Look, guys, you can do this." And the latest thing they added was because before you could cross play, but you couldn't really friend people. So now Rocket League has its own in-game friends list type thing, which is really cool. Another game I played that was cross play was Street Fighter Five. Was uh, oh, really? PC and PS4 cross play on there, and it's the same thing. You have an in-game friends list type thing. And Which stuff is like fine, that. right? Yeah. That, that's, for the most part, that is totally fine. What they need to do with all this crossplay stuff is as soon as everybody's on board, uh, there needs to be online events to who's going to be better. There need to be tournaments of PlayStation, PC, Switch, and like Xbox. They need to like go into that and want, start getting some someone rivalry. someone to legitimately do the versus based on platform? Totally. Like, but, that would be so cool to see. Well, it's funny, right? Because that's something that I think everyone doesn't want to do. It's just like the discussion that, because one of the things they've talked about, and they've said this kind of for all the future consoles to some level, is being able to support cross-play in FPSs, which mm -hmm. has been the whole, whoa, 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 we can't do that because we can't show the console kitties that, you know, in FPSs, you know, what is it, the... How do they? Oh god! I even heard someone on stage try say it to be hip, um, the circle headshot kind of thing or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever that's called. That or 360 no scope. There you go. That thing, right? That on a keyboard and mouse, the precision you have mm -hmm. is significantly better than a controller. And in many controller-based FPSs, they'll put still some level of assist mm -hmm. on your aiming. When you put them together and you don't get assist. It'll be really curious to see how that plays. Well, here's the other thing is that with a PS4 and an Xbox, you could just plug in keyboard mouse. mouse so keyboard they're all going to support it. But that's going to be one of those funny discussions, right? Because be cool. Well, it'll be great because I'm actually happy because now we can all play together, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Let's keep the communities alive. But because I hated getting like a new Call of Duty for me and having half my friends saying, oh, yeah, we're playing on PS4. Oh, the other half, oh, we're on Xbox. And Nelson is like, but you suck. Why aren't you on PC like everyone who's good? And so it'll be fun to see that combined, but I would love to hear that kind of definitive thing again. The argument of, so what's the better controller for an FPS? And see how many people are trying to hold to, yeah, you know, no, the controller's better. I would like to see, like, like let's take, like, a first-person shooter, for example. Let's say, like, everybody can play it, right? Yes. I, and, and that's fine. You can play with your friends. But what I want them to do is I want them to have separate leaderboards for each To show for which you're platform. playing on. And then, like, so at the end of a season... They contact these people who are at the top and be like, all right, we're going to tournament style play against each other. That would be really cool Actually to see. Actually make the tr yeah. uh, tournament of consoles or and like, tournament of platforms. And it would be fun. Like for me, that would be fun to watch. And like you could cheer for your favorite platform. You put the right hype cool. on it. Yeah. All of us would be into that. Yeah. You, let, you stream it on Twitch. You get your camps in each one. It's just like when you're playing Pokemon Go and whichever team you choose, right? And mm -hmm. so 
I can understand that. It'd be kind of fun, and I'd be down for it. Yeah. So crossplay will be interesting to see what that really means. And as Babs is saying, it's Microsoft using it as a competitive edge against Sony. I agree. Although it's also going to be interesting, because along that same note, one of the things that I got from them was essentially every announcement I heard, because they also reinvigorated the discussion that Xbox is now a brand of the overall gaming aspect of Microsoft. It's not just the console. Um, it's because they were talking about getting rid of the Microsoft Store aspect of the gaming piece. And just it's Xbox, it's just Xbox. PC or console. Yes. Just it's Xbox. That's a good and idea. And they've done it in the past where I I can buy a game now on my Xbox One and have it available to play on my PC. Yeah. Which is me huge, right? Mm -hmm. And not just stream it to the PC like you could initially, but literally install it under the Microsoft Store on the PC. One license, go figure, to play the yeah. same game. I love that. But what that also told me is I don't need to buy an Xbox ever again. Yeah. Which, Which is, actually makes me really damn happy. Yeah, I mean, and that's not necessarily... I know people that prefer console, like, over PC stuff. Oh, who would buy an Xbox over it. And that's totally cool. More power to them. That's awesome. Like, But if I can personally keep yeah. investing in the monstrosity of a PC experience that I do, as part of this weekend allowed me to reminisce mm -hmm. on how much money has gone into this hobby, uh, I will continue to do so. Yeah. And I, we have discussions all the time about console verse, right? So that'll be really interesting, right? Really interesting. Well, and, and copy, when you talk about how Sony did that with the PlayStation the, and Vita kind of combination, yeah, they did that, yep. it's smart, but they kept that all in-house in a way that's still Sony. Microsoft and is too, but it, there's a still kind of that weird disconnect that there's Microsoft PC and Microsoft console. And the only other difference is that like the Vita compared to like the 3DS is complete crap. So, I mean, there's that comparison. Not trying to, like, poop on the Vita. Not saying the Vita is even well, bad. Just compared to, like, a 3DS, though. Like, 3DS stuff is whole. Well, okay. So, here's the difference, Nintendo right? handheld. Here's, <laughs> well, I can discuss that to a point because Sony makes great hardware. Mm -hmm. The Vita is phenomenal hardware. It is just missing in what a handheld market has transitioned into that Nintendo has done wonderful with. Now, I will argue also Nintendo is crap when it comes to support for things like playing online mm -hmm. and with your friends and Absolutely. stuff like that. It's, yep. it's such an afterthought that I continue to slap them for mm -hmm. that you need these ridiculous number codes and crap like that where that's so 95, it's, right, it's, or something. It's, I mean, I get mad about it because to like be friends on a Pokemon Go app, you have to enter a code. So like that annoys me. So dumb. <laughs> like, yeah. Can I not just say... Hey, my friend list, like yeah, every add. other app in existence. Exactly. Yeah. Can I not link something? Well, they have to be unique because they're the Apple of video games. So well, that's and what they got to oh, do. God, <laughs> they are in so many ways proprietary. Every gosh darn thing they come up with. Although I will say, Sony is still notorious for like, especially handheld, being the same way with their memory sticks or. Yeah. Mini discs or whatever they do, it's just as bad. And I will say, the Switch is a good console. I think it's a really good console, and I think their game selection is good. Even though it's a lot of ports from the Wii U, which didn't do well. Like, my girlfriend has one. I had no interest in doing it. Everything that we've played and that we've done with it, except for one thing, I've really liked. Like, the Joy-Con stuff that are attached to it uh, suck because it's, like, Bluetooth <laughs> technology. But the Pro Controllers are really good. So, so my problem with... The, I have lots of problems with Switch. <laughs> it's, like, almost there. I was really hoping Nintendo would have announced some kind of hardware update this E3. They could kept things so it's fully compatible, mm -hmm. but give me a smarter design for the controllers. Like that actually when you slide them in, direct connects so that it's just fluid and beautiful with a little more ergonomic in it. Mm -hmm. Give me the option to get a pro attached controller type thing. Give me the full pro controller, but where I can attach it and it now is on the full switch. I got you. Yeah. Give me true power in the switch to do 1080p on everything 1080p 60 and upgrade the screen for it right still make it so your same games will play on the original switch but let me buy a pro version you know that has a few of those things it has better just speed yeah. fast loading and things like that and and i can see them doing something like that but if they did like say they did like a pro switch right it's like oh here's fancy hardware and everything you want longer you know what, better life you know what they would take away from it though they would take away the mobility part of it that's okay though because yeah, now, i know that's what i'm saying well, but that would like be they, what when, they would take away but, but their remember market when, remember when they when they went to the 2ds when mm -hmm. they went to the you know I love just the 2ds but that's the thing right <laughs> they have released the mm -hmm. same hardware in different form factors for different audiences oh 
3D isn't actually your thing and you want to save a little bit of money to play the same game because 3D on the 3DS is... Pop-up book. Honestly, crap. Yeah. Um, so it made sense to release a cheaper version that was just, bam, here's the experience. Give me the pro experience with that because that might compel me to go a step further because right now I still look at the Switch as the most underpowered console. Oh, yeah, it's and definitely is underpowered. A powerful but battery-limited handheld that also won't fit in my pocket... I need a man bag, mm -hmm. right, to yeah, actually carry around. So, yep. so there's, it's this weird, place. and and it makes sense how you would feel that way because it's not marketed towards you. Exactly, it's absolutely. Well, not. and I had this <laughs> argument prior because Babs is on, and holy cow, my nephews love the heck out of their mm -hmm. Switch, right? And and Hydro and all these other people love their Switches, and but primarily it's because they've also grown up with more of Nintendo than I did. Yeah. So my place in the world is that Nintendo is something I've always appreciated the games. I give them props for great game design and some of the most wonderful IPs that have existed in gaming. Mm -hmm. They really do a good job. The problems I have is they rely so heavily on it that I think they also hamstring themselves. Now, in doing so, though, for that target audience, they're massive. Yeah. It just I am more of a general yeah. experienced gamer. And so I'm excited with their announcement. Now, hi, it almost wanted to bounce out of order. But how they're bringing more mature titles and mm -hmm. ports over to it. Things with the Resident Evils, things with, yeah. um, what was the other really mature one? Catching up with the world. Yeah, like, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, you can now be much more adult with your also console that has yeah. the IP you love. So, like, Nintendo, and we should, probably shouldn't be doing this because we're supposed to be talking about Microsoft, but just my last well, thing. Well, it's E3 as a whole. Yeah, Nintendo, like, like, there's stuff they do that pisses me off, right? But... Mar marketing and financials and what they're doing is actually really smart because they know artificially limiting the market to just them so they're always sold out in the because they stays. know they know they can't compete with like Sony and PlayStation like Sony or like Microsoft playing their game so Nintendo plays their game like their own thing yes they, they focus on their totally strengths in their own they focus on their strengths and that's what they focus on that's what they go all, all in credit. on and it works and because it works is what I think makes it smart and you uh, yeah. should do something like that if you're well, in that position which is why I am so happy that there's technology outside of what Nintendo offers so that people who mm -hmm. maybe don't own Nintendo hardware still have an opportunity to experience some of their IP but I'll tell you this. Emulators the, are wonderful. Everyone. <laughs> the Switch has been a Nintendo console I actually like. The last Nintendo console I really liked was like the Super Nintendo. I was never into the 64. I hated the GameCube, hated the Wii, hated the Wii U. The Switch, I'm just like, oh my god, this is like, for me, a Nintendo console, I'll be like, this is fine. And I have watched other people play it, and I've had fun seeing mm -hmm. it, and I could see doing it. My biggest challenge for the Switch is I don't have a place for it in my household because I don't travel enough. Yeah. I can't take technology with me in most cases, so I would only use it three or four times a year yeah, for like a week. And then it would sit because even it happened to my, all the other handhelds I've had, it happened to my SP, which was the last one I put good time into my Nintendo, uh, fold out SP. Mm -hmm. I, Cause I played all through Castlevania and what was the other big one? Metroid mm -hmm. that I destroyed on that. It were wonderful, great games. That's the last time I spent time mm -hmm. on a handheld. Um, and so I know I wouldn't, I, my, my old original, PlayStation uh, Portable PSP, I barely touched. Yeah. So for me, it's still the Switch because I would either sit it in my console and my Xbox gets no love because I'm in here on the PC. Yeah. So I'll freely admit that. I'll let it go. But that is me <laughs> target audience-wise. Give Wayne his Switch Pro. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be interesting to see what – and if uh, Ziora is correct. So it says – it's info out there saying that about four days ago, a Pro and Lite versions were found to be in production. Let those rumors fly. Let me hear some truth. I would love to go further with that. And I don't disagree, Babs, that Nintendo starts with the concept of their games and builds hardware to support it. Mm -hmm. I believe it. It's funny because that also explains the Wii U and how that was essentially a Oof. failure to launch. Oh. Right? There's mm -mm -mm. one sitting in my living room that's forks that she's never come looking for it. I refuse to touch it. it well, I looked at it and there were ideas and concepts. It just, it was so poorly marketed. It's just a new controller, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so with the other Microsoft stuff, you know, the crossplay looks huge. They showed off the new Jedi game, the new Star Wars game. Oh my god. Okay. I don't think I didn't think it looked impressive because what they decided to choose the show was like the most generic video game stuff ever. Let's go through a really simple mission. Oh, here's some simple stuff you're doing. I'm like, give me excited, please. Like it's I'm watching this. I'm like, I could just pop in any Jedi Knight game and just do all this crap. Like, well, and it is since <laughs> I go through my Steam list and look at the ones that are in there. Now, what I'll be curious to see is it looks pretty. There's the animations look fluid and beautiful. I hope to hear that it has a lot of depth. 
Um, because I started playing through, gosh, which was the Star Wars one I was hitting? Uh, the Force Unleashed uh, un- Ultimate, mm-hmm. the Sith Edition one. I enjoyed it. It's a good, fun, action-y game. Like most games, I didn't sit down and finish it. Yeah. But I really did enjoy it. So give me more of that updated. Cool. So I'm aware. Didn't go hype, but I'm aware. Yeah. And, and we want to see more Star Wars stuff, right? We do. We do want to see But more. we want to see it interesting, Star- like something exciting. We want to see, like, okay, for a trailer, I hate to say this, but you really got to Michael Bay that shit, okay? <laughs> we need explosions. Wait, we need action. So what you're we need saying quick is, cuts. We just need that, You're saying you need okay? to be Ubisoft. Because just Ubisoft something. knows how to do shiny, shiny trailers that don't translate to gameplay. But, I mean, at least it gets you excited. Because that's the point of a trailer. It doesn't matter if the game's crap. Yeah. It was, like, you have to make it you look want people exciting. people to be like, oh, my God, did you see that? Which yeah. some companies did. Yeah. So, on that note, though, what about... And because it's funny, because I think it almost went over underwhelming. Battletoads. It was very underwhelming. And I'll give you the reason why. is Because, like... I'm not a super Battletoads fan, but I always raise an eyebrow when it's anything Battletoads. I respect because everybody famously is like, gosh darn that game. Yeah. Like fond memories of beating their head against that game. And I never really did because I didn't own the console for it. And I never owned, or I did, was that one SNES or? It was uh, regular Nintendo. It was was regular Nintendo. Okay. Then I just never had it. I touched and played it and it was fun, but I I rented it. yeah, Yeah. But I never owned it. So I couldn't truly beat my head against it. So I'm aware of it, but never was a fan. But once I saw it, I knew instantly what it was. Yeah, I was like, oh? I, I don't like the art style that they have for it. It's too cartoony. So too cartoony. what's funny Way is my cartoony. first impression was that. Yeah. But then I thought, but where are we today? It would be silly for them to go pixelated. I, the, today. So, like, for something like Battletoads... And the way it needs to be, like, it can't be... For me, Battletoads can't be colorful because of all the anger and hatred you put into the game and then playing it, and it's a beat-em-up. You need, like... like I was thinking it'd be, like, rough, cel-shaded type things, like, thick lines and, like, gotcha. buff dudes and just all this. You, and, you want it JoJo style. Yeah, and it was like, this was... <laughs> exactly. This was just, like... I was like, Battletoads isn't a Disney cartoon, basically. Well, so I don't mind the animation and style of it if it's precise. If it is, like, a legit hard, precise, Mm -hmm. side-scroll fighter, I'll be happy. We don't have any current bad dudes. We don't have any current Streets of Rage. (laughs) bad dudes. (laughs) You know? But you just remember all those games, right? Are you bad enough to save the president? (laughs) (laughs) But it was that kind of game style, right? The the Double Dragons, the stuff like that, that were, like, legit. All of those side-scroll... For me, it was, what, the old Robocop game on NES that was freaking hard as heck. Yeah. Side scroll beat 'em up or shooter type games, and so I hope it has that. Plus, it's that multiple players on the screen together working together. It would mean it's going to be nice to see that genre hit again, and I just hope they do it with care. Because yeah. I will say the presentation was underwhelming because it didn't really get into what is Battle Toads, and I also believe because the kids have no clue. Yeah, right. The kids today, and yet at the same time, it didn't speak to us as a target audience of people who are at least aware what it is. Mm-hmm. So that's why I kind of felt like it went around underwhelmed. I don't. So they already have Battletoads 3D models because they put them in Killer Instinct. I don't understand that's why true. they just didn't use those models. So to you're just right. Do it. They could have gotten more with a more <laughs> yeah. hardcore 3D yeah. higher end. So it'll be a curious to see. Yeah. But I mean, it makes you can put it on the Switch. It may, hey, <laughs> if it leads to another Battletoads Double Dragon game together, that'd be great. Because that was the one on Super Nintendo was like Double Dragon versus Battletoads. Uh, yeah. Like, that'd be really those cool. Those weird mashup ones that were just fun. Yeah. So another fun one that. I may be the only person that got as hype as I did. I think Copy got to witness that. Is all of a sudden they showed a plane. Oh. And it slowly took off into the air and flew around the landscape of a city. And it was beautiful and just modern and animated in such a clean way. It looked very nice. I got so happy when they announced the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have played every <laughs> flight simulator that has hit the market from Microsoft, and I didn't do some of the other ones like the uh, was it the X series or what are the other offshoots that were competing. But I've played every Microsoft flight, and I trace my flight sims back to Chuck Yeager's Modern Flight Simulator way back in the day. I was super happy, mostly because I still have flight sim, and I had the one they tried to do that was kind of episodic, where you paid for pieces. That was pretty, but didn't feel like true Microsoft Flight because it was so limited. Mm-hmm. So seeing this just made me like smile where I'm going to be able to sit down and recreate flight because tra- I've done this flight paths I'm going to do in real life on the exact airline I'm going to fly. 
it is <laughs> like it looked really cool and it reminded me because i played one of the flight simulators i remember which one growing up and like we had this huge like joystick for it joystick everything. for it and everything that should totally be a game you stream wayne only because that is a really unique excitement for you. And like, I, for me, I don't think I would have fun playing it, but I would have fun well, watching somebody the play The funny part is because I know people who have built the full cockpits. Oh, yeah. That have actual working dials because you can get them USB in mm-hmm. and all map to what Microsoft what was the last official flight simulator, 2014, I think. Um, like the full on mm-hmm. the engine from it, where you can recreate all your dials so that you are, and they play it like on my 50x screen 4k set like this right yeah. where you're seeing out the front of an airplane they have the side stuff they'll even put digital stuff there so it literally is a simulator because i was respected that you could earn actual simulator hours in microsoft flight simulator to work towards your flying license that's cool it, so because of that i used to fly them all the time and immediately it got me that silly thing of like i bet you i could land a plane if i had to and if i know. had to you could. I bet you it wouldn't be pretty. You you would have a better chance of doing it than me. Because <laughs> well, I've I've logged so many hours. I remember still to date flying the route from here to Albuquerque because mm-hmm. it was a short flight, but it was one I was about to do for work. And so I got I did it. Flew from DIA to Albuquerque, <laughs> and I did it mostly because as I was flying, I kept looking out the window for what they had simulated as landmarks. Yeah. So that when I was on the plane, sure enough, I was plastered to the window, looking for the same landmarks at the same time frame. Through, it was stupid. It was stupid. Sounds cool. But I enjoyed the heck Sounds out of fun. it. Sounds <laughs> fun. So again, it's silly that I am that excited for a new Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm excited for you, Wayne. <laughs> uh, I'm so, well, and you're, oh gosh, because even Babs brings up the fact that doesn't X-Planes have people that sit around and play as a tower, air traffic yeah. controllers. You actually can do that in multiple sims. Uh, so also micro flight, Microsoft Flight Sim. They tied in plugins where they have specific air traffic control simulators, which I've gotten before and it's weird. Um, because and, as like, why would you take such a stressful job and bring it into your <laughs> daily life? That's what, but that you can do that. And you can actually work with all these people in game where you're, your actual towers. Yeah. It's so crazy, but yeah, huge thing. It's like people who love, love, love trains. Yeah. You just love certain things, big machines and stuff like that, that you'll just get hype about it. All right. The I'm game gonna looks pretty. Go. I'm going to let it go. It looks but pretty. I, I Hold wanted, on to it. Don't let it go. Hold on to I, it. I've wanted an update to that engine for so long. Hold on to that passion. <laughs> Uh, so they also announced an update for Forza okay. Horizon 4. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> My comment was Legos? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. The coolest part about it wasn't even the Lego stuff in the game, it was the cool Lego car that they had there at the show. Was yeah, really the cool what looking. was it? A McLaren that was fully Lego. Yeah. Um, and so it was like. It was, it was just for me, it was just funny to see where it's just like, okay, that's. Yeah, all right. I like racing games. For whatever reason, Horizon is a little too arcadish for me to care. Because mm-hmm. I like track level, full on Sims. I like Dirt Rally. I like those kind of games that are just close to that experience you can get physics wise. And Horizon is not. Yeah. And so seeing Legos in it doesn't really surprise me. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool if like you could like buy the cars, but you have to put them together well, like, in the game. That'd be I mean, cool. You mean. <laughs> You mean like every Legos? Lego game exactly. out there? <laughs> but like, if if they actually put like shops in it, like garages that you could go and that are specifically Lego style, and you buy garages. them like the, either the boxes or like the big bags, and like you have to like to open put them. it together, yeah. Uh, and I then think... you have to like rotate the model, and you actually have to do each individual. Oh, piece. it's Roblox and stuff like that, but That'd actually cool. in game, so it'll be silly. To oh see. yeah, it's a racing game. I forgot. It'll I, would be ju- silly I would just build no, Legos. I got you. Okay, so copy i wish you're on air so you could announce this for everyone when they suddenly showed in the trailer and i don't think we made it 30 seconds in maybe 10 maybe five seconds in before i started hearing these high-pitched squealing noises coming through discord Mm -hmm. as miss copy started to reach that level of hype that i had just had for flying in in a in a plane in the air when Suddenly, there were these characters on screen of cartoonish but somewhat fantasy look. I got my Masetta out, and I was totally ready. That <laughs> they announced where this came from, I have no idea. I'm down there. That Microsoft got hold of Fantasy Star Online 2 to finally bring it officially to the United States, to the Americas, to the Western world. 
because people have been playing it yeah. illegally yeah. for how long now, Copy? Really long time. 12, 10, 12 years? Really long something time. Something <laughs> like that? So, some level of, are you kidding me? Because I remember I haven't installed on my laptop still the full Japanese with maybe a hint of you almost can see English in it version that is no longer valid. And the community is so big around Fantasy Star Online 2 that they essentially fully translated it. And you can play it on, I forget, is it Southeast Asia servers or something like, it's I somewhere like two. Thailand or something like one. that. Yeah. But they have the full instance and Copy's been playing that version for years. Mm -hmm. And so she just let out this squee, saw it all, was like, what? What? What is this? It was definitely out of left field. <laughs> that they're bringing it January next year. So the funny part about it was, oh, so she said it launched in July of 2012, the game itself. They've teased that it would come over here for so long. And it's funny because the Western world has been, you know, playing it <laughs> for so long. But also that Microsoft said it's coming over and it'll be free to play, I think they even said. I will pay money to play it. But that, that's it's like... <laughs> and so that is one that, honestly, because similar how Copy's joking, say she likes how happy I am about Microsoft Flight. I'm so excited for her that Me I too. will likely yep. jump on that game. And it'll be weird because they're going to be these old hats at it. They're we're going to walk us. in like, do, 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 do. Oh, What's they're going to be our Sherpas. Oh, my gosh. They're going to tell us all the things. Experience. It's going to be super fun. It's going to be like, carbuncles everywhere. Da, da. Or, wait, wait, or am I mis mixing games? I don't know. See, that's the thing. I don't Because it's between that and Final Fantasy fourteen, knowing which thing's which. Since I don't play either. I just remember, I just uh, know Maseta is the pre the currency in Fantasy Star Online. Or probably Fantasy Star in general, but Maseta. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure Copy telling you. I'm oh, pretty it's, sure it's So she said it greater than Gil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. But that was surprisingly hype. And even then, it was weird because it was so left field. It was. But we were also fun because if you did watch it. Uh, okay, so I knew. Okay, I was. I thought I might have been wrong. She's like, nope, Carbuncle's Final Fantasy. That um, the chats, because one of the things watching the streams is that she was watching Twitch. I was watching YouTube. Mm -hmm. And YouTube was literally a minute behind the Twitch stream. And so she would react, and I'd hear it like, what? And then have to wait and see it come up. And I was like, oh, there it is. No wonder. But we were both watching the chats. Mm -hmm. And to see how they blew up for different announcements was entertaining. Yeah. And they loved, loved, loved. And she says, Masetta is my currency of choice. There you go. <laughs> Good. So I'm looking forward to that just to even – because that might be something that pulls me in. And because, again, Xbox means PC. Yeah, exactly. Whoa! There we go. Oh, so happy for that. So happy for that. All right. Other than that, they actually put out a teaser, and there's some so many questions to what this announcement was. Project Scarlet. Oh yeah, the new console. They had like a little video of the people saying, "This thing's gonna be the best thing this, ever," and, and it's oh, have it's these so specs great. And, and that was like it. At least they did something. Well, like, it was saying that fall to winter of next year, they're gonna release a new console that should, quote unquote, be able to do. 120 frames per second at 8K. Okay. <laughs> that it'll have SSDs, so faster yeah, load times. SSD, yeah. I think that's all they announced. Yeah, and then they just talked about how amazing it is, but without actually being like... Showing, saying... Can't show you, yeah. It's, it's one of those things that, at least in previous announcements, and this is where I think this one is kind of a... I've heard thoughts but reaction to sony because there's been rumors about ps5 and little discussions about ps5 for some time now in fact sony rumored said that ps5 will still have a disc drive mm -hmm. which actually does make me very happy yeah it's still one of the best blu-ray players on the market or had been and so it's something i'm hopeful for and so it almost seemed to me like a oh we're doing something too and we got nothing to show or say about it, but we're doing something too. I think they're trying to get ahead to be like, we were the first one, so they could just say, like, we at least did something first well, to talk about Well, it'll it. be interesting because we have no idea right now, right, when Sony's going to actually have something coming out. So they at least put a date down. What it does mean is Sony could beat them to launch if they're smart. The question is, can they do it? Because... Microsoft might have also done this strategically, throw it on the gauntlet, mm -hmm. so that Sony may try to rush out the door, which maybe means they don't get everything they wanted done. Because maybe they thought they had another year of R&D that they could do stuff before they actually had something solidly building. I don't know. That's that's totally speculation Yeah. on my part. I, just, I was trying to wonder why this time frame, why this announcement? 
because it's a year plus out. So it's saying holiday season next year. Because here's the other thing. Now, granted, from a Microsoft perspective, maybe this makes sense. I don't need a new console because yeah. I can do it PC. Or because of the way they're doing it now, it's one of those that it doesn't matter what happens between now and then, in a way, if that makes sense. Well, and like, I want to say, no, it's not them. Sony, at least, has teased backwards compatibility and stuff like see, that. Are every, like That's what I've heard was this backwards compatibility thing. I've even heard it from... This for the Project Scarlet thing, like I've heard all that. So Project Scarlet, it makes way more sense because if they're porting it to PC and your new console's a PC, yeah, I think that's not even you have to put a new chip in. You're I just think, like, yep. I think somebody probably just has a plan for how they want to show stuff. They want to let people know, like, like, look, this is a solid thing that's happening, and whatever the next big thing is is going to be the next step. And it, this could just be their first step, just for Microsoft to be like, this is how we want to plan out how to show it and just do this. Oh, since it's E3, just show something. You know, and that's the thing. It was a question of could they? Because the other big thing about E3 is Sony wasn't there, not as a company. It was interesting because a lot of their IP was shown. Yeah. <laughs> and there's some discussions about how Sony won in a way. Because they weren't there, there's no expectation, but they still got a lot of their things out. Because of the different vendors that are coming with exclusives and things. So when's the when's the going to be the Sony experience type thing? Well, supposedly the... they've got their own conference. Yeah, like when is but that? But I thing? forget. Yeah. I'd have to look it up again because I, I, I had heard that again and I forgot to double check it. Because that last one where they put everybody in a tent for the Last of Us 2 trailer, I'm like, God, I'm so glad I'm not there. Right. Like, I would not want to just sit there and do that. Then have to get up again to and move, move to, to the real experience. auditorium. Oh, God, like, was I mean, so it's dumb. like, jeez. Yeah, I remember that thing where it's like, what are you guys doing? I'm sure some people thought it was cool. I'm just that it lazy. But so that, it'll be curious to see what comes out further with that. And I hope to get more details because it, it is at that point where everything out there is long in the tooth. And the pro versions and the S and then the other versions what are just kind of like, eh. You know, refresh is great. If I didn't have it, I'll get that. I don't need to really upgrade. Maybe it'll be a Death Stranding experience for their PlayStation experience. I bet you, like, they'll have something. They're like going to have that. something yeah. with that, please. Well, there's because there's other announcements, right? <laughs> Because there's things that will be mm -hmm. for Sony, especially. So the last thing I have on there from them is Halo. Yeah, the remake, like the remake Halo, of the first no. game. Halo, no. Halo Infinite. Wasn't the that... next Halo. I thought they said that they're bringing the original Halo back. I thought Halo Infinite was so, a remake of the no. first Halo. Okay, I've never played Halo, by the way. I just assumed that's what it was. Based on how the guy presented. Because he literally said before that trailer was we're bringing Halo back. The first Halo back, and I thought he meant, oh, it's a remake of Halo. Never played it, so I, I don't know. <laughs> so, no, and I, and I can understand where that would be kind of a unsure, right? Yeah. But from the way I got it is they're showing this whole story clip, essentially, of guy in space. And the only, you know, it's one of those things where very quickly you start to figure out where it's at. And this is why I know it's the follow-on. Gotcha. Because um, he's in a Pelican, I believe, exact, you know, their ship of choice. Mm -hmm. As he comes through, and I'm just going to kind of skip ahead because, you know, five-minute trailer, most of it doesn't matter. Yeah. And gets knocked out, ruckus kind of thing, skip Finds ahead, skip Master ahead. Chief in space. Looks out through the window, and bam! <laughs> there's the reveal, right? That sure looks like a Spartan. Yeah. And, you know, what? Because we know Master Chief is dead. Is he? Prior to, this, <laughs> prior to this in the storyline, essentially, again and again, Master Chief is dead. Okay. Not coming back, right? So he puts it in there. Kind of brings in, goes through this whole process. I love this part where it's like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. And plug him in. Like Frankenstein. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> I don't, like, I don't know where he attached the dot, you know, the points. Yeah. Boom. But boots up the ship or his suit. Yeah. And diagnose him. And it's funny because this looks like the intro sequence you would normally have in one of the games because they always do the calibration of like, all right, let's calibrate. Look up. Look down, right? Yeah. Do you want to inverse your controls? Exactly. <laughs> It looks like that sequence from every <laughs> FPS out there that starts out with you like as a res resurrected something. <laughs> Came out of cryo sleep, just got booted for the first time, whatever. That's what the sequence is. Mm -hmm. um, and so already hype, right? Because you look at it and this is distinctly Master Chief. Um, but there's some interesting little moments of there, like the chip and such that is essentially the, I want to say that's the AI chip mm -hmm. that he throws in. But Cortana ain't there. Because Cortana is dead. Um, that's, Nobody ever dies, Wayne. Okay. Well, but this one, her, her AI got so corrupted and so thing that essentially, is, if I remember correctly, Cortana's dead. And so it's basically just putting in a chip. Um, but he comes in and he's like, they say things have been crazy. You look at the Halo loop and it's destroyed. Mm -hmm. And what's so they kind of just do this whole hype about we're getting a Halo. 
Um, and he opens up to say, I'm out of here. Yeah. Jumps out. Halo Infinite. So that's all after the fact storyline. So that is, there was some discussion about bringing updated versions of various Halos mm -hmm. to PC and stuff again, I believe. But in general, it was just showing like, this is a continuation of the storyline, more that's happening that's in the Halo universe. And so I'll be real curious to see what this is going to be. Actually, I didn't know if I paid attention to this part last time where like the breaking of the ring happened and such. But see, so when I see stuff like this, like never playing it, I get ex like, I just know like I'd be excited for Halo fans with their hype for it and without even liking it. So I see that I'm like, oh, that's good for people that really like that, like that yeah, game. Yeah, people that are fans yeah. of Halo and such. And so that, well, for me, and I have enjoyed the Halo games. I really have. And especially if they bring back or bring, you know, like split screen co op. Because that was something that really pissed me off about the end of the last part of Halo's. At the same time, Halo took away couch co op. Mm hmm. Black Ops added it. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. At the exact same launch time frame, like a Call of Duty game added couch co-op split screen play when Halo, which had been famous for it since the get-go, took it away. So weird. <laughs> so I hope they would be smart and actually bring that back in some form. And there's another, I think, I want to say it was a it was an indie game I saw during the Microsoft thing. And I, if it's either Onizaki or Oninaki. looks yes. really cool. Yes, I did see that one. Well, I forget the name. Because it reminded me initially looking somewhat like... Associated type of or yeah. animated thing because I want to think what was the one where you Okami or something where you yeah. did the drawing yeah it was Okami Such, yeah. reminded me but wasn't yeah right just something about the art style and so that's why I was expecting it to kind of say like Okami two yeah but it wasn't so that was an interesting piece uh, yeah and that's the thing there were some other little ones mm -hmm. that were kind of in there but those are like the big takeaways for me that were big uh, off after that later that day they had Ubisoft. I didn't watch that. Well, so the funny part is I actually went back to say, like, what are recaps of what Ubisoft did? Uh, oh, I'll give them credit. Watch Dogs Legion came out. So you're aware of the Watch Dogs series? I'm aware of Watch Dogs. Good, bad, or ugly. Neat idea. Hack mm -hmm. the world. What you can do with it. What was neat about Legion as a concept or gameplay thing is that they are um, letting you work as a team, uh, essentially – where it's not just one hacker. It's mm -hmm. a group of. And so one of the cool things they kind of showed with that, and yeah. So it's, it's like Watch Dogs multiplayer type thing? Is that the idea? Not so much. It's more uh, you're a whole team of people who are oh, on the same mission. And so the so player has to control you, like each individual. You have assets. Okay. You I have assets you. of people where one of the big announcements was every single person in the world can be recruited onto your team. Hmm. And what they're setting up is a world where everyone has a backstory. Let's see. Mm -hmm. eh, Ultimate Edition, I don't care. Go into... Or is that just showing? Yeah, what? Oh, this is dumb. Pick the wrong trailer. The controller. Yeah. <laughs> but they're showing scenes where you're going through and it says, like, we need someone... Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> wow. Every like, single time it looks like it's going to show right? the game, dumb. it's like something else. <laughs> but they talk about where... You need to do this accomplishment, so you need someone with this talent. And walking around, and as you're walking around scanning people, it's giving you dossiers of everybody. Mm. And then you can try to find someone to then talk to and recruit. And essentially, you're working in a time frame, I want to say it's in London, or somewhere like that in the UK, that the government as a whole has become oppressive. And they're watching you everywhere. So it's 1984. Right. <laughs> and they have things like drones patrolling the streets and mm -hmm. things like this, all this stuff. So, boom, drones are coming after you. And having to deal with, and there's situations where your characters can get killed. And of that roster, it's now continuing on. Hmm. So it's a neat concept. And one of those, almost like a, you know, where you're managing teams and stuff, but they show like all the ones where they have this old lady that's going, but she used to be an assassin back in like the old <laughs> days. And so now she recruits and she's like, oh yeah. So she's wandering around, gets on the city bus. And stuff like that. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> but it's just the idea that anybody can be an asset depending on what you're looking for skill set. So there are aspects of this that to me look really interesting and are blowing up the idea of open world. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious. I haven't played any of the Watch Dogs. I've loved the ideas of them. I've heard there were issues with each yeah. of them as to why they were good, bad, or ugly. But there are things in it that just make me now curious to follow it and maybe try to check that game out. So that was one that I did see some announcement on and thought looked interesting hmm. and so 
uh, more so than most of what I saw from Ubi. And the challenge is, as I, I always do a cautionary flag with anything Ubisoft, that they make pretty pictures, pretty videos that never live up yeah. in the game. I always say this with Rainbow Six Siege. We go back and look at the trailer today, and the updated game still does not come close. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> Division was similar, even though even though they're pretty, because Division's pretty as heck. Division 2 looks pretty as heck. Yeah. And they're showing content on that. Eh, I don't really care. Some new Rainbow Six stuff. A new Tom Clancy squad base game. What other stuff did they show? Again, I didn't take away a lot that I thought was impressive because Ubisoft. A uh, quick question: Was the was Elden Ring during the Microsoft conference? Oh, good question. You said Elden Ring. Yeah, it was the George R. R. Martin. George oh, R. R. the Martin crossover game where and he's, Miyazaki. Or yeah, whatever. where they're kind of working together in was some that format Microsoft on it? or was that Square? Oh, no, it was Square. Was Never it Squeenix? Yeah, it was Square. Yeah. I was gonna say because I remember that being talked about, and I still was kind of like, "Yeah, what what's happening with this?" That's an I interesting don't know. combo. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. With so and feel free to bring up other stuff because I, I watched Ubisoft, but I don't think I really retained yeah <laughs> in a similar way like mm, okay i don't know ubisoft like if you like like if you're interested in the games you know the games they make it's great otherwise it's like like i i, I was like seeing like what do i know from ubisoft like i don't care about assassin's creed like I don't <laughs> that, care about, yeah they did they say something else I assassin's creed Watch, i think they showed like probably some new dlc thing something, something. I, yeah. i'm sure they showed something assassin's creed and i haven't paid attention since black flag was a good game so I'm just like, eh. So I didn't bother watching it because I was like, oh, there's nothing I really care about. That's fair. Uh, what other stuff? Why are you not searching? Terrible, terrible thing. Uh, anyhow. I just knew I had to watch Square. That's the one I knew, like, well, obviously so I have to watch the that. next one on the list was Square. And I'm bad because I distilled it down to two things. But, and we'll see your opinion on this, but... Mm-hmm. The main thing I said was, of course, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And the main reason being, they launched their conference with this. Mm-hmm. And it's something we've been aware of for, what, it was announced like two years ago? No, years way ago? longer than was that. Was it that? Like four years ago because at they, E3. When they showed like the early, we're going to do it. Yeah. And everybody lost their minds. It was the same year Shimu 3 was announced at Sony's oh, E3. Like, that's how long it's been. And isn't Shimu 3 out? And no, it, it comes out November this oh, does year. Does it actually? Yeah. As I say, I remember seeing more stuff about it. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, just so they start out just right out the gate saying, We're doing this. And it was something that on stage, it was funny too, because the way they try to hype it and do stuff with it. But it, it pretty. Yeah. Right? I, it, it's really pretty. And there were some notable things about it. Like, one of the big things is the style of gameplay has changed. The fighting mm-hmm. significantly has changed. Yes and no, but yeah, significantly. Like, uh, I want to take a moment to go through that. Before I watched any Final Fantasy VII Remake stuff from the E3 and anything like that, and when I heard they are going to do it, I immediately was like, it's going to suck. It's like, and you, when you remake a game, it doesn't have to be like as good as the original, but it has to be like respectable. Yeah, you know? if you wanted to pay Give it a good name. Do you know, something exactly. that says like this is of the same vein as what I remember and love. I swore this game was gonna suck, <laughs> and I was just like, this isn't gonna be like this is gonna be the Square Enix is gonna ruin it because I've had a personal just thing with Square screwing up stuff, and I personally feel like Final Fantasy games have just gone downhill in my opinion, and I, like Final Fantasy to me is not really Final Fantasy anymore, and I was like, they're gonna screw it up. This is gonna suck. Then I watched all the E3 stuff, and it looks good. <laughs> It looks really good. Uh, I was like, the I'm like, that's why they're spending so much time. Like, it just looks good, and the detail looks good, <laughs> and like everything I've heard from press people who talked about it, from stuff we didn't get to see, they're like, it's good. It looks so good. Like, I I'm excited. I'm legit excited after seeing all this stuff, and I was like, this is not what I was expecting. Yep. I was expecting something totally different. And it's, oh, it just looked really good. Well, and they brought in the actual visualization. Of, we It's funny because a lot of this is scenes we know. Things we've seen. When you go back and play the game, you're like, oh, yeah. Some of the focus points in the combat, because in the original one, it was a classic... Turn-based, yep. Turn-based, what is it? Just fantasy game, right? Yeah. So many games have used the logic from back in the day of the old school side-by-side mm-hmm. layout. And Final Fantasy did a thing where it was still side-by-side. The biggest things they did is they gave it a... 
real time ish feel because you'd have your time bars fill up as you'd go. And so you still needed to progress. You can't just sit there forever and think and do it, but it, it just still was turn based. You got to strategize and do all the things. The idea that at first when they showed it and they said, every time you hit the button is a swing of the sword. Yep. And so you're kind of, well, that is not turn based. And I am running around doing things. Okay. Very actiony, very action RPG type, very action. Mm-hmm. But then they have these bars that the fill up, bars. and when they fill up, it now turns into the strategy mode. That's what I like about what they did with it is, I mean, Square Enix is basically, unless it's like handhelds like Bravely Default or like like not as highly funded games, they'll still turn out turn-based games. But basically what they're saying is, look, it's not a turn-based game, but it still has the same elements, which is the active time battle, ATB, which was so popular back in like the 90s for the Super Nintendo RPGs, yep. all the way to like PS2 stuff. And uh, so you get the ATB gauges, and like you can use that to cast spells, use skills, and it slows down, or it you can just set it to hot buttons. Right yeah. Oh, well, so it's a combination. You mm-hmm. can also do stuff throughout where you just quick cast. Yep. Or you can do the full on take your time, go through menus and yep. stuff like and that. So ATB has always been two modes. When you like, I play Chrono Trigger. First thing it asks you for ATB: Do you want it to be weight or active? Wait is where your bar fills up, you have time to take your turn. Gotcha. Just like in this, when it slows down to use your ATB, that's ATB wait. And then, or you can have it active where everybody could just do whatever and like you just you do just it as fast playing. as you can. Yeah, yeah. You just keep going. Which is ATB active. And like, okay. I'm like, oh my God, they still use that's just, a, it's the same thing. It just looks different, but yeah. it's the same but thing. It's elegant. <laughs> yeah. Right. They did a very good, very elegant implementation of that, mm-hmm. that, that kind of key, key piece of it. You know, the other thing about so the nice thing is you see that and you think okay this has some really good potential to just be a fun game and they took and they show the sequence with the scorpion you know the event of the first boss the event now (laughs) that it is right (laughs) because that's the only way you can describe it it went from because even the first boss it's a boss battle like boss battle this is and i think even in the show it felt like 10 minutes of just beating on this thing it is yeah like it's a and, full... and it changes what it does and it has strategy to it and sets they, up shields and like uh, you have to do certain and they're things taking advantage of it being a truly 3d game yep and they also have the mechanic in there where you get to control all of the characters the ai will control your other teammates while you're doing it but you get to quick hot button type mm-hmm. switch between them to cast specific abilities to do certain things and they even showed where you can fill up that gauge for multiple characters and do your own kind of comboing yep and say, all right, I'm going to do this move, and I'm going to do this move. So there was a lot not shown uh, as far as gameplay goes. So, like, one thing I heard after the fact was characters have, like, first of all, when you're using, when you're doing just standard attacks, there's actually different type of attacks you can do for just the standard ones. And apparently somebody found out that, like, there's even a launcher so you can do hit, hit, launch him up in the air. Juggling and, attacks? And they're thinking that, oh, so you hit, hit, launch him in the air, switch to Barrett, and juggle, juggle them further. while they're in the air. Well, because they showed some things that kind of have that back and forth. And even the combat, there's a point where the scorpion's on the wall the whole time. Yeah. And the other piece they've talked about is the banter. Yes. That's in the game. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love dude, your face It's just face. like... Yes. Like, if anybody played Final Fantasy VII, you remember the beginning, the opening bombing mission. Cloud is, like, just, like, kind of, he's a dick, basically. He's just a dick. And him and Barrett always jaw at each other and stuff like that. And it's there. And while they're fighting, it's there. While they're doing stuff, it's there. It's not like Final Fantasy's 15 generic thing where it's like, I'm going to get on a chocobo so the blonde guy starts singing the chocobo song. Like, it's not that. This is actually unique banter to like each situation and everything that you're doing. And like a lot of this wasn't seen. A lot of this I heard after the fact from streamers who got to go in this special Yeah, the ones who actually got in the booth who were there at E3. And playing the game. And got to play with and do Mars. Because that's really why you go to E3 is not to see the trailers. Everyone sees the trailers. It's to now have conversations with the developers and play some of the games so you can get some of the nuance that they can't capture in just a trailer in a 15, 20 minute presentation. And so where you can pull out those details because the banter aspect, the idea that they have their specific roles mm-hmm. and things they can do in the action of the game that they're going to spend so much time in Midgar. Yeah. The whole game is Midgar. This for the whole first, game, the this first, whole first disc, game, right? They said that's going to be, no, the whole game. So the game, yeah. <laughs> they said the, they said the game cause well, uh, seven remakes me an episodic. Release. It's episodic. Well, that's why I said, so the first episode yeah. is all Midgar. Exactly. Not the whole game, but the first episode, right? Yeah. And people have opinions. I had them too when they first announced that at the original one yeah. that came out. Because it's like, but when I bought the game the first time, it was three discs. I got the whole game. Yeah. 
But they also commented as like, but the game's going to have two Blu-rays worth of yeah, content. Yeah, like 100 gigs. <laughs> which is still wonderful because it's kind of like, in a way, it tickles me because it's, you're still going to have multiple yeah. discs, even with the biggest storage yep. technology we have. Yep, yep, yep. Please, please, Square. Because we're listening, yes. Make sure you don't have to install the entire damn game on a hard disk <laughs> to play it. That's what they're thinking it's going to be. Well, so, but that's the new standard, right? I know. <laughs> I've argued forever that the technology and the bandwidth of Blu-ray is so good. Yeah. You can still do the classic thing where you keep all your setup files <laughs> on the hard drive and mm-hmm. your save files. Yeah. You just need to know where you're going. And if you're doing a, a constant stream cache onto the drive, you don't need to copy the whole DAT file over. Just make it uncompressed and make it stream smart. Because I would not want to take up 100 terabytes of storage, kind of, or 100 gigs, sorry, of storage for one game. We already do that too much. I'm it's, just saying, like, I'm tearing up thinking about Final Fantasy VII So right it's now. funny, right? It's Cause, bringing back, like, all the feels, because I'm like, it looks so good. And I remember in the trailer, the micro, like, the motorcycle fights and stuff, I'm like, oh my god. They're bringing back like, all the, the games, elements. I'm like, oh, I'm like well, tearing up Because I forgot, about right? It. I forgot when you go up to the casino planet. Yeah. Or the area. Gold saucer, yeah. How much I did there. Yeah. And getting to it and from it. You, you, same way. That emotion of like, gosh darn it, they're doing the right thing with the remake aspect of it. And so I do want to get into... because Square has not made me feel this way in a long time. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's Usually a lot, disappointment there's and a anger. lot to be said about that. Because they also showed... That was gameplay, right? That was the conference. They showed the trailer. Mm-hmm. And it starts out where you get this updated look at yeah. Eris. And... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever her name is. Ed and Midgar. And, and like the whole everything where you just, it looks like a, tra- it looks like a trailer. Like, yeah. And they've always been phenomenal about trailers. Oh, of course. Yeah. But when you watch the gameplay and in between, you realize the technology is there that there's not much change between trailer and gameplay now. It's right there. It's so good. And like, especially that wide shot of like Midgar and stuff. Cause I like it. Cause like in the original, like if you compare like their over city shot of like midgard now versus like the ps1 oh my god <laughs> yeah there, there you go like, we're watching it right now and just the motorcycle minigame they're seeing it oh yeah no god. it's oh it's, they're still watching yeah, it yeah no i'm i'm Jeez. capturing it for them but like it looks because we have higher technology like the city now looks bigger which i think is and really it looks cool. more populated yeah exactly because they yeah. did well so this city was big right because yeah. when you first came down on midgard and you realize you're zooming zooming in zooming in zooming into a quadrant of it yeah zooming in zooming into the train and it was way in there because it starts with Eris, right? The yeah. same kind of thing. Zooms out and then back into where you are. It's mm-hmm. big, but you don't get to explore it all. But this one, they show it and they make it seem populated. And they did some things because when they first showed Barrett, right? You're just like, yeah, my boy. Yeah. I'm cosplaying that. But when they showed the slash, right? And I forget yeah. the name of that specific cross ability, slash because yeah. they never said it. Yeah. They showed it and the whole audience was like, I know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Then they show Tifa. Yeah. And everyone was like, bae. She looks good. She does. And even for all those haters who tried to say something was wrong with it, which I'll ignore because that's just yeah, garbage. Yeah, that's just stupid. But even to the point where they had little details, right? When you see the buster sword and you see the materia on the side. Yeah, that's cool. It's just little things where you're like, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing nobody's talked about or I've seen yet is the menu system and they like haven't the talked swapping material. Any of that yet. That I want to see. Well, because we haven't seen out of action. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to stream through and do a lot of these things, so we don't know. I know. And oh, I'm so excited for it. I am. You see all these abilities and things doing, so this just looks like it's going to be such a ride. And one thing they didn't show in any gameplay is each character actually will have different stances. So That's uh, right. Like you mentioned that. Cloud will have like one where he's kind of more nimble, and then he has one where he moves slower but does more damage. And like everybody will have like a different one. So from what I've heard for people who played it, like... There's an actual really interesting built-in combo system between how you can use his normal attacks and switch between stances and then with the characters. Like, I'm hoping, like, I'll play this game and honestly, this is going to sound weird, it'll kind of have, like, a Devil May Cry aspect where you're trying to see how high you can get the combo to go. Like, I'm really interested in seeing if I can have, like, just, well, a, just a cool, fun thing like that to what do. they're saying, saying and showing where each strikes a thing, there should be those non-scripted combo events where it's due to the engine and the physics and the mm-hmm. way it plays you can create That'd be so your own cool. situations yeah. right that to me is some of the best gameplay you can ever do where it's not like fighter game scripted you do this combo yeah. and if you catch it at this moment you do this combo the ones that you just find you can do god that feels good because it makes you feel like a champ and this is why you should play monster in our world 
I've heard very good things, <laughs> but everyone's already passed that. So I'm still playing it. <laughs> and Iceborne's coming out, which was that was the Capcom thing. Was the huge expansion coming out the if, end of summer for a console, and then fall for PC. Just do them at the same was, time. And a lot of people have been talking to the developers where they're they're like the one annoying thing is everybody's like they're not in kill, and they said they're aware of it. Just they're they're still working on it, but like this one, it's like, a marketing thing. Yeah. If it always came out on PC the first time, then consoles would die. Yeah, because you need your exclusives. Yeah, like Final Fantasy VII remake for Sony PlayStation. <sighs> so I'm really because I had a PS4 and I had like games. I sold them all because I only got it to play multiplayer games with my girlfriend. Then we moved in. And you like, didn't need didn't to do really, that anymore. Didn't yeah. need to do it anymore. And I'm, but she still has hers. So I'm okay, glad so she it's has still it. available. I will like I will buy it to probably to play on her PS4. Which is fine. <laughs> yeah. As long as you can log into your account, store your save as a cloud save, and therefore you can take it with you wherever. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not losing memory cards. Yeah, seven remake looks looks good. Looks it okay. looks phenomenal. <laughs> well, and then the final piece that of course was like coup de gras for so many people because there were several showcase announcements of a new view of something that you hadn't seen before. Mm-hmm. So Tifa seeing more of Barrett. Sephiroth. But is the moment when the man with the hair... So on this trailer, if anybody doesn't know, what Sephiroth is saying to Cloud were the last things that Zack said to Cloud before he died, saying when he needs to live. When you look at Advent Children, yeah. right? No, no. Or was it in... Crisis Core. Or Crisis Core, sorry. And yeah. Crisis Core. Again, the one I didn't play, which is why... It's a really Zach, good game. <laughs> Zack doesn't exist to me in lore. <laughs> if you, okay, so when Advent Children came out, it really sullied my feeling on Seven. Like, I choose to ignore it too. And how, like... The East thinks how Cloud is. Yes. Like, really bummed me out. And then I played Crisis Core, and Zack is so awesome. Like, I was just like, I think I like Zack more than Cloud. Well, and that's, <laughs> and that's what happened. And my problem was, I actually really liked Cloud. Mm-hmm. And I liked just, I loved Seven. It was my introduction to Final Fantasy, and I got it when I got my PlayStation. And so yeah. that was, I had that classic where so many people onboarded to Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's very special. And so hearing anything that, to me, retconned, aspects of final fantasy 7 just pissed me off and i only ever heard it because i never experienced it so i was like screw that mm-hmm. and i can imagine it might be something i should touch at some point because immediately going to like eight and squall and other stuff like that was kind of well that's not cloud and there were a whole other opinions about um, those people and so <laughs> so as i learned other casts right? yeah. it's the same thing like a whole different cast with 10 mm-hmm. right and when you're going through all of them and there's good and bad and yep such where I will always have that, you know, cloud type thing. Cloud, Eris, Tifa, Barrett, all of them as mm-hmm. being primary things in in my mind. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. But the other big thing is announcing that it's coming out March third next year. So first quarter next year. Which will be very interesting because again, this is a Sony announcement. Essentially. Because yeah. it says PlayStation Four, yeah. Squeenix. Now a Theoretically, it'll come to PC at some point as well. Mm-hmm. But there's also thoughts, rumors, questions that it could. It said they'd mentioned something that playable on PS5. So, this is what I think they're going to do is we're at the end of this current gen, and they've been working on it so long using the current gen. If they were to scrap it and move to next gen, it would just take longer. And so, what I think they're going to do is they're going to release episode one for the ending of the current gen. And then on next gen is when you're going to have. The port to PC and even, you know, other consoles even. Uh, And then they'll do like one and two. So I think this is the episode one for this game is going to be the end of current gen. Episode two will be next gen for it. And I think, and then they'll bridge them together. Well, I could see them releasing uh, like other stuff. The updated version or something else. There's so many ways they could do it. Mm -hmm. Again, it's all PC hardware. So all you'd have to do is say it's the exact same game, but look, it's coded for 8K. But another great thing that so, that uh, Square Enix is doing now is they're really starting to be like, we need to put our games on PC. And so that's why I'm kind of like excited because it's like, I can get it on console and play it because I want to play it as soon as possible. <laughs> and then I will get it on PC later when it releases and experience it again, probably right before the next episode so, comes out on next gen. And that's one of my failures in this whole thing. It's a challenge for me because I do and don't love hype. Mm-hmm. There's things that I want because I rarely today get to be on the front of the hype train. <laughs> like I'll be aware, but I won't buy it because I have so much stuff I still need to play that it feels like I'm just adding to the stack. And I know I won't be able to dedicate the time I need to to really do it. And I know too many people who crush things because they either don't have jobs or don't have the other responsibilities yeah. or other things or have to pay for a house or all these other things. 
And so they have the time to just old fashioned geek out, Mm -hmm. crush a game. And I feel like I miss out in some ways, right? That little bit of like, Oh, I want to get in there with everybody. But even if I try, by the time I get to some of the stages, people will have finished it weeks ago. Yeah. And so part of me just stays away. And so like, I want to play heavily Final Fantasy 15. I do. Regardless of some of the good, bad, and uglies right. of it, I want to play it. I started when I was enjoying it. I still haven't because I got other things I need to play. And so it's weird for me because I'm behind and I keep wanting to say, let me grab it. I want to do it with Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be on the hype train. I started trying to play through one again and, and listen to the whole lore and then I just never got it. And so one of the other problems is if it doesn't come out for PC at the same time, then I'm already six months behind and I may never play it. Oh, here's the thing, Wayne, because we talked about this. <laughs> I think you put way too much pressure on yourself. I think what you need to realize is... But I need to have fun at the same time <laughs> everyone else is, damn it! I think what you need to realize is that you're an adult, you can do whatever you want, and you choose how you're going to enjoy things. So who cares if you play a game that you want to that you're six months behind on? Who cares? I just, but it As long means, as you have fun, that's all I care It means I, I have about. to somewhat <laughs> avoid the hype, right? I have to yeah. avoid the even the after-spoiler time frame. Because now I'm that's months true. later, so it's two so, months in and everyone's talked it and i can already guarantee you when seven remake comes out i'll get it and everybody else will be ahead of me because i'll get it and i'll have to work so i'll have to go through it like slowly you know but in situations like that like i usually avoid doing it so like say like there's streamers i follow that i know are gonna play it i won't watch them because i'll know because i want to experience it like For just your, myself yeah you, know? you want to have your and, clear i don't know it doesn't get. It doesn't put pressure on me like at all. <laughs> like I just, got you. I got you. Okay. I think you just need to cut yourself some slack, Wayne. <laughs> just give yourself a break. But I also have to do it for the fans, so I can speak intelligently <laughs> on whether they should enjoy it too. No, just be like, here's uh, here's an intelligent thing. It's called honesty. I haven't played it yet. I don't want you to ruin it. I'll play it whenever well, I want to play it. Okay. <laughs> but this is where I give hype, and I, I'm aware of many things. So beyond that, Squeenix, to me, I captured it as, and everything else is remastered, basically. Or re-released? Uh, definitely. I, that was my whole thing. There were maybe three other things that were actually new. And I can't even remember them. Right? Uh, because just like we were talking about with Octopath Traveler, yeah, that's just a re-release on a new system. Yeah. With some shininess. Yep. They announced what? the? Oh, I love this one because you and I agreed on this one. The Final Fantasy VIII remastered. remastered? Quote, unquote, because it looked the same. Right? Exactly. I don't know what was being remastered. I don't know what was being remastered about it. D- d- because it's now available on some new system? And it's been available well, and, like And I chuckled <laughs> because I looked at my dang Steam list. Yeah. And sure enough, I come into my Steam list. I'm just going to share it because yes. And I look in here and I go like, I'm pretty sure I have Final Fantasy in here somewhere. And I looked it's like, oh look, Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy, well 13. this was 13. I thought I, was the eight. I was when I was doing the search. Oh, I, I thought gotcha. I had. I thought I had eight in there, or maybe I did a search. But it was looking through. I was like, "Doesn't it? Can't you already?" Yeah, you can already play, play it like on PC. It, yeah, and it looks the same. And here's the other thing: uh, is that Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII were also like the first Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy games back in the day to be released on PC. Right. So like, like it's been on PC forever now. Okay, like. <laughs> But, like, the remaster part, like, I got scared because I was like, oh, God, don't do 8 Remake. Please, no. Well, and then it was remastered. I was like, oh, thank you God. You can't yet. Like, they're not going to remake Well, I, I know, right? It'd be, one, it'd be really interesting if they did, like, Final Fantasy 1 Remake. That'd be awesome. Because that would be a whole level of people who've never touched. That'd be amazing. <laughs> or at least, like, do, like, because they did 4, like, in 3D. I thought they were going to go on and do, like, little handhelds for, like, the older ones and do kind of, like, a 3D thing. But they only did the it for 3 right? and 4. Well, do more of what, essentially, they did what Nintendo did as yeah. they transitioned to them. So, I did have a feeling with a lot of what they showed that I was kind of like, and other stuff. But, but And I say this because I believe I heard so much hype that was like, Square Enix killed it. Mm-hmm. Best conference of the thing. I was like, wait, 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 wait really? Um, because I will say, they were smart. They let off a Final Fantasy VII remake, and everyone created babies in their pants. Yeah. And then were in the afterglow throughout the rest of the conference. Mm-hmm. So that everybody left with this level of, yeah, I, yeah. I really like that. That was, you know, and I can't wait for more and oh, more and more and more. And they just la- had that going. That when you really analyze what else they showed, there were maybe two or three other things that were anyway new. The. Other stuff I was interested in, it wasn't even new, it was Remake, was that day, first of all, on the Switch, the collection of Mana came out, so you could play Final Fantasy Adventure. So, yes, so the Nintendo stuff, they yeah. did a lot of similar, but different. And, and then I'd give Nintendo credit, damn them. 
Uh, but this I was during them, the Square Enix one. Oh, was it during yeah, the Square Enix? Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, because they were Mona. showing close. Yep, yep. It was Final Fantasy Adventure. See, I, I mixed which ones where uh, they came. Yeah, it was Final Fantasy Adventure, and then Secret of Mana, and then Psycho Densetsu 3. First time ever official release to the West, which is cool, because I played like a fan translation of it. And But but the collection of Mana was like only on Switch. I was like, that kind of sucks. But then the next trailer was a 3D remake of SD3 called Trials of Mana for PC. It's already on my wish list. And <laughs> I got excited about that because it's like... I haven't played it in so long. I remember playing it. It was good. It was a good successor to Secret of Mana. Yep. And, like, I'm really excited about that because the 3D, like, the way the game looked, looks different than the shitty Secret of Mana remake. <laughs> I don't know if you played the remake. No, because really I've never bad. played the Mana series. Oh, wow. Dude. What? Again, I've played a lot of damn good games. I've just missed certain iconic ones. Here's something I could tell you that could actually help you if you ever play it to maybe ease your mind. Like, if you play, like, Final Fantasy Adventure, which is technically the first one on Game Boy, you could beat it in, like, eight hours. So, like, you could take, like, two weeks and just a couple hours at a time and just get through it, and you won't feel any pressure because it's not that long of a game. Same thing with Secret of Mana. You could beat it relatively quickly. And, well, I never uh, even finished Chrono Cross when I started going through it. Well, or Chrono, Chrono Cross Trigger, is very, whichever one I did. Okay, well, Chrono Trigger... Dude, you should have beaten that. But I, Chrono Cross, I would give you slack on because it's very convoluted and hard to pay attention to. It, <laughs> they're both good games. But Chrono Cross, you know, that one, I can understand if you need to take time because the story in that's out there. But, uh, but well, Chrono just in Trigger, general, dude, it's me trying to go through throwback stuff that people did at the time. Again, because we talked about it. Yeah. At the time, you could only afford one damn game. You're right. You're right. And so you played it. You're right. All the time, and I don't want to put I don't want to put pressure on you. You haven't been it. That's fine. This is why I use strategy guides now to, to and that's fine. Experience the game. Strategy guides are fine. Walkthroughs are fine, yeah. especially for like older stuff. That's like, what I mean. no problem. And I will still do as recommended. Like copy made me go through the water temple in Ocarina of Time without any guide. Yeah, so I can at least experience those moments. The, experience true. the challenge. Yeah, that's a good idea. And one hour fifty minutes. And so, <laughs> first time ever touching it, never knowing what I was doing. Yeah, no guide. I feel good about that. That's good. And so, <laughs> I mean, people beat that game in like 16 minutes. Oh, but no. still, you know. No, I've seen <laughs> that people were speed running, and I've also seen where the people, the average time on it, they said, when you've done it, is like an hour. Yeah. And so for me, having cold, no idea, and having to do it all just mm -hmm. memory, uh, under two hours, and taking like a little bit of a break in the middle, I felt good. <laughs> and I guarantee you there's other Square stuff I just can't remember right Again, now. there are, I and people can bring it up, yeah. but we do have to talk Nintendo. The only one I feel that really mattered yeah. Because there was stuff from AMD that really, to me, was underwhelming as all get out. Look, we have processors that are performing exactly where their price point says they should. <laughs> that, that, was, that was what I got out of it. I mean, the closest they came as they should, well, in gaming performance, when we do all these tricks, it plays just as well as that $1,200 mm -hmm. you know, Intel processor for half the cost. Cool. And they tried to say, with our also our video card, we can do this as well. We don't have RTX. Yeah. You know, which is really the only thing you're paying for in the 20 series cards from NVIDIA, which I do like, though, because ray tracing is now we get that announcement in all the future consoles, even though mm -hmm. they're going to be AMD chips. So there's going to be more there. We hear from Intel that we're going to get ray tracing out of their embedded chips in the future. We were actually just talking about earlier in regards to that. Nate and Unit were talking about how AMD is going to crush Intel with their upcoming product line. And like this huge, they're having this huge like talk about how like Intel is well, like going down. <laughs> so the funny part is, it, what I'm excited for about this is mm -hmm. AMD is kicking it in a way that Intel's going to have to respond. Yeah. So, yes, awesome. And I am okay with AMD leapfrogging here and there, right? Now, the challenge is because people keep saying, oh, AMD is so much better, this, this, this. But the problem I keep running into is day in, day out, every day living with a processor, Intel has still forever been, to me, silk smooth. It all does what I need it to. Mm -hmm. And especially because as we're getting to a point now where CPU is not the limitation, it's other bandwidth. Even video card is not necessarily as much the limitation, yeah. although as we push higher pixels, it is. And so it's interesting. And it's funny because Kuro's now lighting up the chat. Oh. Because he said, <laughs> we're say, oh, I thought I heard, I thought I heard something. <laughs> I, I almost swear I heard the clickety click yeah. of hard to hardcore typing. <laughs> but it's saying single core IPC of the new Ryzen is better than the 9700K or 9900. Nothing is single core anymore. That's the problem, right? It's because even bad games are getting at least dual. Yeah. And part of my discussion on that is because now they did have one thing where they showed, but it's specific to streaming and how they're doing the additional cores and this and that, which I did give them credit for. That the streaming piece where you could run and do CPU based streaming versus GPU and it not hurting your bandwidth with streaming. And yes, I'm excited for PCI Express 4. Awesome. The thing is, that is for once they're getting ahead again of Intel. Awesome. Love it higher PCI express bands, all that stuff. 
but I do expect Intel will come back. But the challenge right now, because I was looking, I've got a older 67 or 6850K Intel on my computer right now. Mm-hmm. I have been doing the spec comparison against all the new CPUs, and even to the top end Intel card, the percentage difference is enough that I do not need to upgrade my CPU for some time. Especially for anything a thousand dollars, we have to do everything and RAM and everything, right? So it's cool. I'm chill, and it's interesting. We'll see what happens coming out. And I'm, but I am excited that AMD is going to come out with new stuff because I want there to be a push in the market again. Yeah, I want Intel to have to get up and actually work again. Competition and, is good for yes, business. And I, I have <laughs> supported AMD in the past. It's always that user experience. So I'm excited for. It. I will tell you that their announcements were boring. Uh oh. The gal who was giving it had no life it was just like yay see the numbers aren't you excited everybody <laughs> cheer now yay it's just something about the presentation left me very lackluster also because i'm not in the market for a new there. hardware for pc right now because i i'm good but so that was one thing so nintendo and yes we're running over time to deal with it yeah um <laughs> nintendo they came out and does as nintendo does because it's always their own world yeah. and that's what nintendo does hey everybody yeah. Because that's Nintendo. So the, the big highlights I got that I remember are the two new Smash characters, which is the Dragon four. Quest heroes. Four. I thought, were, two. I thought it was four. It's Smash the, characters. It's the Luminary from Dragon Quest Eleven and then Banjo-Kazooie. And then uh, the Luminary from Dragon Quest Eleven, when he does like his special, he could be like all the other heroes and stuff like that from other previous Dragon Quest games. Um, I'm pretty sure, but there's two others, dude. Totally well, no, I thought they announced like the main two they showed, and mm-hmm. then in the video, four of them came out. But I maybe I'm, like, or I may be misreading that. All I know is people are really mad at the Dragon Quest one. And I don't know why. I think it again. <laughs> well, so I think that piece in general felt a bit underwhelming. Um, just because they wanted, I think people were hoping for what was it? I, I was hearing with Smash. Um, I think just some different characters yeah. or something like oh, yeah. that. And so when they said it was like Dragon Quest, people were kind of like, that's that that's what you gave me? I Okay, here's the thing. Like I played Dragon Quest Eleven. I have it on PC. It's an awesome game. And it, I think it's cool to see Dragon Quest get some Smash attention. Um, and then there, they also uh, said the port for Dragon Quest Eleven to the Switch. It looks like, like the best version of the game ever. And yeah, the Luminary right there. And uh, because the Dragon Quest XI port is going to have, like, all this cool extra stuff in it, and you can travel back to previous Dragon Quest games in the 8-bit and 16 Yeah, like, they, they, they literally made both. characters for them. They yeah. showed both, which was cool. So, like, here with these other characters, like, Dragon Quest Eight guy, and I think that's Dragon Quest Three on the left. I'm so, not but sure. But see how you have, like... And then that's Dragon Quest Five. I'm pretty. Or no, that's three. I don't remember. So that's the thing. So are all of them new to Smash, or a couple of them already in there? Here's the thing. So like, you could play as like. Uh, oh, it looks like you could just swap them or out. It, it's just, I don't know, right? They'll be the same character. They'll have the same move set, basically. They're the same character with different skins. Yeah, it, it's basically like that. And okay, then, so it's really two characters or whatever. But so for example, Simon and Richter Belmont that are in gotcha. Smash, they're the yeah. same character. They just look different. There's uh, a bunch of those. But they might do small tweaks because you have Ken and Ryu in. In Smash, but they each have their own unique. Well, moveset. because just like <laughs> well, just like in, so it makes sense. But I'm not sure. Like the way that trailer looked, it was just like it's probably gonna be the different skins, same moves, based on like what I saw there. Gotcha. And then Bandra Kazooie was like at the I think the it was la- at the end. You, well, and yeah. because they initially showed it, and it was Duck Hunt. Yeah, and, and, and it, trolling him. Yeah, yeah. that was great. <laughs> and, like this one, a lot of people joked at because they're like Bowser. Because Doug Bowser. Because yeah. Doug Bowser. So the little piece there with the CEO that. Um, then they the big one that showed Luigi's, Luigi's Mansion, Mansion yeah. which cute. I don't care. I don't. I've either. never played any of them, but looks fun. Yeah, and it's just like it lo- if you're Mansion. into that. If you're into that, it looks like you're gonna have a good time. Like uh, it looks like a fun little goofy thing. Yeah, to do. it's another one of those. Okay, so this admittedly, I was excited. Am excited. Although it says not actual gameplay footage. Oh, the Dark Crystal game. Yeah, but that's because we're getting the new Dark Crystal series on Netflix, and I know people that are involved with it. And it's puppeteering, it's Jim Henson yeah. type works. It's all the original stuff, and I've seen. I don't know if you've seen the trailer for the new Dark Crystal. No. It pretty. Is it? Oh, because it's a series, not just. It looks better than the original. I'll probably movie so much. I'll probably eventually watch it. This looks like a Final Fantasy Tactics and it's game. A, well, so that's the funny part, right? Oh, it's, it's a, called Tactics, yeah, right? <laughs> It's, it's funny because it's just a little nothing thing. Yeah. And so it's just funny that that's in there. But at the same time, I'm curious to see what they do with it. Yeah. And so we'll see. It, it'll it'll be, probably be really charmful, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. It'll be like, yay. And so we'll see what they do with that. 
Um, <laughs> this one actually looks pretty good. So uh, it's the, the Zelda. Right? It uh, looks, Link's it, Awakening, right? Okay. For anybody that's interested in this, uh, there's a dude that I watch on Twitch, part of a th- group called Yo Video Games, who thinks who's Link's Awakening is his favorite game ever created. And he, he can, so like the demo they had that you could play was timed and he sped run it. Oh, and, really? And he got there. He says everything in the game. Ooh, Charles of Mana. Oh, yeah. Pause oh, that. Yeah. Everything in the game is exactly the same. It just, it's just upgraded graphics. Uh, like, well, there's good and bad to that. Everything's the same. There's good and bad to that because I never played it. And for a lot of people, because that was a handheld only, right? Yeah. And so it's coming to Switch. And so in the sense, for people who maybe didn't own or mm-hmm. have access to it back in the day, great opportunity to do it in the most cartoony, cute, possible bubbly way ever. But the difference is the price tag on it <laughs> is like 60 bucks, where Wait, you can the, get, you could play it on the Switch, on like the Nintendo so thing for six bucks. There's a you whole just play additional it. piece to like all of the cost of things, yeah. right? Because even... Anything that's being released at full price when it's really remade, because you mentioned like the Contra collection, and initially I looked at, it, I was like, looked at the collection, but at least they were selling it for nineteen dollars. Yeah, right. Twenty, when they, 20 bucks. Twenty bucks when it yeah. comes out, even though it's really two games I care about a whole bunch of mm-hmm. every other thing that had a With Contra no name online close to it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay, so you didn't really give me anything worthwhile. Not even cleaned up, right? Just yeah. So, bleh. but at least it looks real pretty. I never played it, so I could see if I had. Yeah. The Switch, I might look at that as like, oh, here's an opportunity to play something I haven't had. So that's don't cool. pay full price for but it, though. God, Please don't. It, well, <laughs> I have a challenge when, other than like, where Final Fantasy VII Remake is a real investment. Yeah, that's like a remake where it's like, you can obviously see it's, it's worth that, mon- that much money. It's yeah, a new it's game a new skinned game, yeah. into some of the original story. Mm-hmm. Okay. But when you do it and it's just, come on. Come yeah. on. It's literally just a reskin. Come on. All right, so here you go. Trials of Mana. So this is the sequel to Secret of Mana. I am excited. It looks... Totally different than the Secret of Mana remake, which is really horrible. So, if, for people who don't know why I like this game, and I'll just go through it real quick, is there's actually six heroes, and this game is cool because the combat's fun, because and it's replayability, because you can only pick three. So you can mix and match and cross-link stories and stuff and have different dialogue trees. Depending on who you have available. And this is huge for, like, a Super Nintendo game. Well, like, no, you're really right. Cool. No, that's cool. Well, because <laughs> like, for me, that was Wild Arms. Yeah. Which it, that was whoa, PS1, like the PS1 one, and 40 yeah. some characters, mm-hmm. and they all uniquely inter- I was like, What? Yeah, it's on my shelf, it's awesome. Um, yeah, so that's actually really cool. So, like, it's it has a good replayability, but the 3D remake looks totally different. Where the Seeker and Mana 3D remake was literally just the same game, still top down, and everything. This one actually looks like third person with like 3D character models and everything, like, yeah, like third person. So, I'm really excited about it. And uh, action-y and kind yeah. of, yeah. Like, I'm super hyped for it, and I totally remember that boss battle, too. <laughs> and well, and I saw the characters. They look adorable. Yeah. They have that that feel, right, which is totally cool. So so I'm excited about that one. That makes sense. No, yeah. that's cool. And I, what was it, Copy, when they did the the collection or whatever? I think she's yeah, already collection pre-ordered. Yeah, Mana, yeah. She's already pre-ordered it. Nice. This one I is this? don't care about. Um, it's... Anime. So the problem is, this falls in the category of like... Oh, this is the Tales of game, right? Is, oh, yeah. Tales this, of Arise. Yeah, this is New Tales. The problem is I have too many Tales games I need to play. Dude, the... the oh, oh, no, no Fire, Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> but that was another one they did announce. Yeah, Tales pretty, of Arise yeah, was announced. Which is yeah. another one where I was like, cool, but I still need to finish the other yeah. Tales. So Fire Emblem I've never cared about because I try playing. I do not like the mechanic of how strategic it is. It's very Shining Force. And so that just bothered me. Oh, this one. Uh, the re- You could skip this. Yeah. The I mean, Evil. cool. <laughs> you can now play Resident Evil on the Switch. I guess it's cool Great. if you've never played it before. Right, yeah. And you only have a Switch. Great. Who knows? Um, what was this one? No More Heroes? Yeah. Wait, no. Is this that? No, this, no, is, this, is, this is... What is this? Some sh- pew pew game. Did I miss this one? Oh, wait. Yeah, oh, that oh, was the, Contra the actual Road Contra player, one, yeah. which still... before there was that marvelous thing at the end of a trailer. That was No More Heroes three. That was announced too. Yeah, No More Heroes actually because it's in the joke of like, oh, the one where you get to really work up your light, yeah. you know, your light stick. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Mech games, I like. It'll yeah. be interesting. This looks like another. Oh, I forgot the genre. I'd say where it has that kind of same mechanic, mm-hmm. almost of the armor cores kind of. Thing, yeah, that see when I first saw it, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, and so it has that kind of feel to it. And anime eyes. So, sure. <laughs> yeah, right? Sure, I'm sure it'll be fun. The big one for Nintendo, though, was... Uh, I don't well, so uh, there's a couple still, because yeah. this one... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That was pretty cool. <laughs> because they didn't really say anything. They just showed it. That That's pretty cool. And, but looks like gameplay. 
And anyone who remembers, this is some of the, this goes back to Space Harrier. Dude, this goes back to the first time, the first and like only time I ever played a Sega Saturn was playing fucking Panzer Dragoon. Like, it, oh it's, my God. It's a, it's a style of gameplay that goes back to people who played, like I said, Space Harrier yeah, for Space me Harrier, in the arcade was the yeah. back, like original. Yep. To, you know, Fire, or to uh, Star Fox. To, mm-hmm. It's that back flight game. All right, here you go, like kids. Like even Rogue Squadron. Um, oh, wait, this one's. This is Sun and Sword. Yeah, so Sun and Sword. There, or Sword and Shield. There you which go, we already knew about, so there's not much to say to that one. Looks good. So we knew about that. Uh, I, I know my girlfriend wants to play it, and I'll probably play it with her. So yeah, I've still good. never accomplished the Pokemon game. I've played pieces <sighs> of over and over. Well, but that, oh, here we go. Astral Chain. This is the Platinum Games game. Oh, that was the one. Yeah. yeah. And this one, like, the trailer, honestly, doesn't look that exciting. When I watch some gameplay of the director of the game playing it, looks it does it way better justice than the trailer does. It actually okay. looks really good. And like, uh, and actually, because you're twin cops, this is the one I was joking about, which is like yeah. Virtual Cop 2077. Hey, that's right, <laughs> Cyberpunk like, Virtual Cop. Yeah, and like, you can actually customize the twins. You can actually customize the characters. I thought it was really cool. And like, yeah, that's just the story, but the action stuff is so Platinum Games. It looks good. Okay, no, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Because that's another one. Like, all right, cool. Um, oh Some gosh, mafia game. Oh, I don't know if this one even mattered. Uh, <laughs> skip forward. Oh wait, no, no, I, yeah, I don't even care. Looks like it'd be better on PC. I'm, I'm skipping it. Empire of the Sun. I'm skipping it. You guys aren't even seeing the. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so amazing. Oh, Ultimate Lines three. Okay, so I am <laughs> curious what your thoughts are on this because I'm very meh. I. It looks meh. I'm not gonna lie, but well, I'm still gonna play. I it. just well, so I like the characters they're showing. The Marvel fandom is like sweet, and the play of it looks fun. But I just don't feel compelled to play this game. Uh, I do because I've played and beat X Men Legends one and two. I played and beat Ultimate Alliance one and two. I will play it, and th- and I'll be- I'll play it, and I'll be pissed about the same thing I've been pissed about for every Ultimate Alliance game. Is why isn't the Punisher a playable character in these games? Gotcha. And then I'll just be mad the whole time. But I'll play it and I'll beat it. Oh, and we also I, forgot. I missed this one. We also forgot. Oh, the Mario Olympics and Sonic. Yeah. Uh, we also skipped the Avengers for the big reveal at the end of Square Enix. Well, that's because I equally did not care about that. One. <laughs> I want to see more. I, I want to yeah, see like the actual gameplay. I, nothing like, of it compelled me to like, oh my god. I was just like, yeah, okay. I want to see more. Here's the game for everybody that's just like, I don't understand it because I have played it on 3DS and I don't care. Um, I don't need to weed things in virtual life. I have a whole house to do that in real life. Maybe that's what that's for. Maybe... Is that not a commercial? Screw you, commercial. Um, <laughs> maybe the thing about Animal Crossing is it's for people who don't own homes. No, you too can have the experience of maintaining a house. It's a game to keep your neighbors happy. You either <laughs> you either get into it or you don't get into it, and like it's literally like that. Like I tried playing a Stardew Valley, and my that's girl, another one. My I'm girlfriend like, loved it. I she loved can't. it. She loved it. I played it for like an hour. I'm like, I can't do this. Like I just literally can't. I, I do played this. it. I did the. I had the Animal Crossing on my phone thing. And I was like, this is dumb. Why am I wasting money here? Let's play Devil's Advocate. People, like, you look at Animal Crossing for how can you play that, where people probably look at a uh, flight simulator as how could you play that. So we'll, we'll play Devil's Advocate, you know. We're not saying they're bad games or anything. We don't get it oh, personally. I know people get hyped. I know they yeah. care. I know I don't. Animal Crossing, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a well, 30 and, out of well, 100. <laughs> so Hydra's wife, right? Eleanor Moon was sitting there like, oh my God, squeeing, cannot wait. Because for her, it's a relaxing experience that she can sit yeah. there and just enjoy. It's like when you play The Sims and really spend all the time decorating, building the homes. And I can never get into The Sims. I could play I it some and enjoy just kind of working around and seeing how the mechanics work, some relationships. Stuff. Yeah. It eventually became enough maintenance. I was like, I no longer care, but I at least appreciate it. I was happy when, um, was it EA that put it out? Uh, for free Sims 4 mm-hmm. that you could get for a minute. It's like, cool, right? And yeah, it's a cute game and that's great, yeah. but I don't care. Uh, sorry, if you like that's it, that's me. cool. I don't I don't care about it either. I couldn't get into yeah. it. And then the Banjo-Kazooie reveal. Which, right, was just, again, a reveal. I was actually hopeful initially that this was going to be a new Donkey Kong Country. Um, I was. I was hoping they would do a new, clean, super precise did you- Donkey Kong Country. Because the last one I want to say on console was like the Tropical Freeze one, and I think they ported it to 3DS, which is actually uh, it was actually pretty fun, and it was very loyal to it and everything like that. Yeah. And the co-op was fun with it. I just and thought it was going to be, and when they did that as a later part of the announcement to mm-hmm. Smash, I was like, oh okay. 
this is definitely something like first of all i'm sure people would be way more happy to see a banjo kazooie game but they're probably gonna be super happy that he's in smash well, i never got into like during the 64 with all the 3d adventure games and like the ring around i never really got into those so, like banjo kazooie to me i'm just like whatever but i know people love it yeah like no, i know people love well, it and, I, and it was a solid game mm -hmm. it's like for me and i still haven't picked up the dang remakes of spyro <laughs> stuff like that but there are certain games or crash bandicoot stuff that are really yeah, I never played those. solid yeah. good game. oh gosh crash bandicoot I'm i never played so those. good and i I've just seen the remakes in there clean and so i was like i'd like to check that out as a kid i saw games like spyro crash and like banjo kazoo i'm like these are purposely marketed towards me as a kid no i'm not gonna buy them so for me it's because <laughs> i saw them as adults as an adult and i was like oh that's cute and i played and i was like this is a lot of fun god spyro was such a good adventure collection game with fighting elements too and and it was skill-based trial things or jump from here fly this way catch yeah. the thing and just time it because there's still one freaking crystal in the first spiral that <laughs> the x9 were never able to get <laughs> and we saw it you could see it you could <laughs> never find the path to get to it pissed me off <laughs> so it was the one thing that kept me from 100 percent on that game maybe you can get it in the reignited trilogy <laughs> <laughs> it's just so i remember all right so from nintendo quite honestly for me Biggest thing that people I don't think had even on their radar. Um, yeah, Super Smash Plus. Oh, is, the final thing? Yeah, the yeah. final thing, which is pretty sure what's coming up here. Yeah. And so, because as soon as you saw it, you're like, oh, that is Breath of the Wild. Yeah. No question. And everybody I heard in the chat was like, new DLC? Oh, cool. Right? Totally down. Let's get some new DLC. And it's... Could uh, be fun. And no. It's a new, a new game. game. Yeah. Full on Breath of the Wild two which a lot of people are like when was the last time they did a direct sequel because in the overall storyline right i would say because even in zelda 2 was it truly a sequel kind of thing the only the only reason well here's the thing this they said it's like a breath of the world 2 technically legend of zelda is a legend of zelda 2 that's like part of the name link's adventure um they did like obviously between the original game and the next game there's no direct correlation except for like common things but i think it is a sequel because like you don't fight ganon in that game uh basically you need to stay alive to make sure ganon doesn't come back yeah it's because you already of. beat him yeah it's the threat of the return because yeah. that's why when you die you see ganon laughing at you at the game over screen because you die so ganon comes back so it is technically, I believe it's it, but I've seen YouTube videos where people break the shit down and they're all parallel dimension, universal well, stuff. Well, I, I have Ugh. the encyclopedia for Zelda's world and stuff mm -hmm. talking about all the connections from all the various games and the three overall timelines and what you do and how they're named as appropriately of, you know, one's very negative or kind of the, yeah. you know, whatever... Uh, tragic one and does that, anyhow so I, there's a lot of convolution going on with it and all that matters is linked to the past so so oh that's <laughs> okay. funny and no i have not actually seen it yet copy because i've been too busy other stuff she's saying can we talk about all of that breath of the wild 2 fan art that's floating around on the internet i've never played breath of the wild i've so, i've so lost I've interest in touched Dota, it so. uh-huh and i've played it for about an hour it's really good like it is an open world great dungeon crawl 3d See, that's experience what I heard. it's a basically it's, zelda 1 3d like, it's so <laughs> good i should probably try. well so i actually I, you know the funny part is i actually compared it better to two mm. in a lot of ways because to me one is zelda right yeah two gave us an open world top world yeah with those elements we'd run into battles and play like zelda one and 2d dungeon crawls where side scroll dungeon action. And you also gain levels and choose where you want to put the level gain and things. So, so yeah, like I that. could see that. So yeah. for me, that was like really where it flowed to, although you could argue updates from Ocarina and all the others, right? Yeah. But those mechanics, I say, really kicked in in two because people undercredit two because it's hard as hell. Mm -hmm. And I crushed that game. Dude, Loved Death it. Mountain is really hard. Oh, but it's so good. It, it's good, but it's really Death Mountain. Well, because it gave you some really of the Castlevania relentless. type side scroll feels or yeah. some of those, right? Or, or Metroids and stuff where it just had that extra level of how you played the game. And I'm trying to think is what's harder, Death Mountain Zelda 2 or the hallway leading to Dracula in Castlevania 1. <laughs> Both of those are really tough. Because <laughs> I remember just beating on some of that stuff. It's hard so though. So bad. It is hard. So yeah, that's going to be something that I really, I'm happy for. I'd like to keep on the radar when it comes out. Because again, if mm -hmm. I go through my side quest in my life of playing the major Zelda releases up so I can truly play Breath of the Wild and explore and enjoy it. Because I'm enjoying the technological advances along the way. Yeah. I'm currently on Wind Waker. 
and I'm doing the HD remake. And it's looking good. And next, I'm planning to go to, I believe it's Twilight Princess. Yep. Because I've heard it's amazing from people who really like the depth of the story. And then Skyward Sword. And then Skyward Sword. Like the worst Zelda game apparently ever. I don't know. This is why I heard. Me, I Maj- don't know. For me, it's Majora's Mask. But yeah, I don't like that game. God, I don't like Majora's Mask. So many people either. give me ang- angst for it. I'm like, I, I know. Like and then just like, why do people like it so much? It's, anyway. It's, yeah, so repetitive <laughs> and just an, a dirty, unhappy world. Wind Waker, though, is when I lost interest in Zelda. So I started playing it, and it's. What was nice is honestly after Majora's Mask, it's so refreshing. Like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, yeah. It, it really no. <laughs> it's cartoonish and fun, and it made me smile in the first five minutes in just a genuine breakout. This is nice. I'm enjoying mm-hmm. myself. This is fun and quirky in a witty good way, and so it generally brings a smile to to my face while playing it. Where Majora's Mask, I had a level of just like, oh crud, what do I need to do again? What sequence? I know. Where and I can never get into Majora's Mask. I had to, I had to guide that one. And it still <laughs> pissed me off. Yeah. So yeah. So Nintendo did solid, I like and it's Nintendo, their usual yeah. thing of their IP over and over. I personally, when I talked to the quality of the conferences, I gave it to Microsoft because I think they had the most overall new type stuff being talked about and things that I'm curious to see where it goes. Squeenix was solid. Yeah. But again, I think it was a lot of rehash. Yep. And Nintendo, I will give some credit that they had a lot of newer stuff it's a as good well. Mixture. And it was kind of in between, right? Yeah. So it's hard for me to put which of those, but everything beyond those, I was meh. Well, the EA, t- I like that they're talking still some more and they're supporting Apex Legends. Yeah. And doing more with that, new modes and things like that, because I, I like Apex Legends. It's fun. Um, don't play it enough. But beyond that, the sports titles I didn't give a crap about. I okay, so like at the end of the Microsoft one, there was like this quick thing that I saw, and this is a big deal to me. Was I saw like it was a football game, but it was college teams. I was like, what? And I paused it. I was like, wait, whoa, because <laughs> anybody who's ever played these, because NCAA, <laughs> like all the colleges and EA had this because huge you falling can't out. license and the way you do stuff and things. And- so there hasn't been a college football game since 2013. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, and then so I saw it, but it was a mode in the new Madden where they're bringing some colleges in for a story mode. <laughs> and that could, you know, and here's the thing that's good is I don't care about Madden NFL. I only care about NCAA football because I love college football. I'm hoping that's a step in the right direction to bring it all back. To so have it happen again. Yeah. But well, I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> which could be good, honestly, because my challenge with sports games is always they should only release a sports game every three years, maybe. And then just update it. And then yeah. minor, inexpensive DLC updates with yeah. the new roster. 15 bucks a season for just updated stats and names. That you can pay some yep. terrible intern to do, <laughs> right? But I mean, that that would be smarter. NFL fans are crazy. I know. they are. Well, they are super it's like crazy. NASCAR fans and stuff like I that. I mean, yeah. the amount of like even the cost for NFL jerseys and like people buy it. Like they're crazy. They like to spend the money. They like to support what they like. Yeah, they like to give. They're crazy. They like to give millionaires more millions. Yeah, and spend way too much on a ticket. And yes. especially if their team wins the Super Bowl. Gosh, but so two bad. things missing from Nintendo I just want to say real quick. No Bayonetta 3 and nope. no Metroid Prime 4. Opportunities? Nothing. nothing. Well, yeah. and that's where my challenge is. They didn't give us a whole lot of, like, where are they pushing it? Where's the new? Where's the big? The new Breath of the Wild was the biggest, like, oh, they are actually working on something legit, full mm-hmm. scope, big game. And Astral Chain looks pretty cool. Th- there were some neat yeah. pieces in there, and so we'll see what comes that's out. That's probably why they didn't show Bayonetta, because Platinum's been working on Astral Chain. <laughs> that's it probably could be, why. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Know, but Metroid Prime 4, like, some, uh, come on. <laughs> Metroid. I love Metroid. Metroid games are good. Okay. Yes. All right, so that's pretty much the coverage we have from E3. Would love to hear about your opinions on what we thought. You know, some hype, some things that not as much. Or were there things that you did key on that we missed? Probably. Because there's things that we focus on. Like I said, we kind of ignored Ubisoft and some of the other stuff. So if there was, feel free to email and show us at vtwproductions.com if you weren't listening live with us and playing with us with it so that we could cover that in the future as we talk to because there's more details that will continue to come out. Oh, yeah. And so we'll be interested to see what else is going to be on the horizon for gaming. In a weird way, I'm not as blown away hype saying that, oh, my God, I can't wait for all of these new things. And when they're coming, there are some neat things because there's, like, Stadia and stuff like that, the, mm-hmm. the Google streaming service of games and stuff that I don't care about. But yeah. it'll be interesting what that does because this would be, like, the third major yep. streaming service I've seen that's tried to come out. We'll see if it sticks. Mm-hmm. I had played previous streaming services that were actually good and worked well, but I didn't need them because I own the games. Right. So we'll see. I still haven't figured out where that's all going. Um, if I am overhyped truly... for Seven Remake. I will admit that. <laughs> well, and I will say that one sticks yeah, in my head. Would, of like, yeah. yup, yup. The joy 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So there's things there. So we'll be curious to see. And plus, there's games coming out that we know are already coming out. Borderlands 3 and stuff like oh, yeah, that. Borderlands. That, that and, we didn't uh, get more from, don't need more from. Is it the Outer Planets or whatever? Outer Wilds? Or no. Is, or... It was the Outer Planets, the new Obsidian game. Okay. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I saw something on that. So there's some things to watch for, some other things that are out there. We'll see. So that's pretty much our coverage for what we had more than time for today. <laughs> um, thank you for sticking around and listening yeah. to our nonsense. But yes, by all means, please give us a chat, a shout out, or anything for your thoughts on things. And I'll have to be reminded to grab this off Twitch and forcibly push it over to YouTube to be archived for everyone else and look at ways to not have this issue in the future. I think we should just take YouTube out of the back and just do it like old Yeller. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if sorry. only they weren't the good free platform for me keeping that is episodes true. up. There you go. Of, that is true. Unless everybody wants to put a higher stipend into our Patreon so I can keep adding storage to the NAS that I have down there to keep live Hey, episodes. I give a f- nice fresh dollar every month to Which, the like show we said, it Patreon. Does, <laughs> it does pay for the, what we keep everything up on. So we're yeah. very big fans. Um, but I, it's me keeping it shoestring. That's nice. All right. So with that, we are done for today and we are going to run out of here. So thank you very much for listening. Appreciate it. And you guys have Bye. a good, Oh wait, before I go, I will Uh-oh. play this thing. Well, no, this is sorry, Hando. I didn't do this before. This is a drop in. He gave us that I need to play. So Damn it, why isn't this thing working? Bend my will. <laughs> he modified my voice to throw it out there to say, when technology doesn't work. So with that, we're out of here. Thank you guys. Have a good time. Good, good goodbye. See you next (laughs) zombie. Good night. I forgot.